96 percent of the way engineered like the, <laughs> like you know they can't figure out door handles johnny had <laughs> five seconds of panic in uh, front of me sheer today. panic it was amazing <laughs> what up everybody welcome to the spoken tire podcast today's episode is as usual brought to you by off the record we love off the record here at the smoking tire podcast they are here to help whether you get pulled over for something big, something small, you never fight it out on the side of the road, folks. Don't argue with the police officer. Take the ticket and get off the record. Whether it's the website or the app, offtherecord.com slash TST or code TST pod on the off the record app. They are here to help you get out of those points that come with those pesky little tickets. What you do is you take a photo of your ticket or a scan, send it to off the record. And they will uh, uh, set you up with a qualified attorney in the jurisdiction where you got that ticket. They will fight that ticket. They'll go to court if need be. You don't have to do anything. And if they can't get those points off your record, you don't have to pay. So go to offtherecord.com slash TST or use code TST pod on the off the record app. Have that ready in your pocket. So if something happens, you know who to call. All right, on today's episode, Johnny Lieberman is in studio. You know him from Motor Trend, the inevitable podcast, Spike's Car Radio, and being incredibly annoying on Instagram. That's right, Johnny Lieberman. He's brought us whiskey. We're talking about the Lucid Sapphire. We're talking about the Corvette Z06. We're talking about uh, delicious, fine-crafted brown liquors and a whole lot more. Johnny Lieberman is in studio. It's the Smoking Tire Podcast. Let's go. I bet I could uh, get a better fire going if I put a, a doctor glove on my hand and just dunk it in alcohol. Like rubber out? Al- yeah. Uh, rubber glove? Yeah. Guess uh. what? I, predictable results. <laughs> that uh, also melts. You ever have like <laughs> nuclear hot rubber melted on onto your, your hand? Yeah. I oh, literally shit. made napalm. I then also, uh, my friend uh, Mark Hill uh, realized that- Not if, Maddie Hill. His brother. Okay. His brother Mark. Yeah. He then realized that- uh, 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 when we were younger, Mark was the problem. When we became adults, Matt was the Thank problem. Thank you for reading my, yeah. my eyeballs. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But Mark realized, you ever light a <laughs> ping pong ball on fire? Uh-huh. Oh. Yeah. They fucking, dude, it looks like, it looks like one of those uh, sunbursts, you know, like when they zoom in yeah. on the sun and it's yeah. like a, it's one of them. That's rad. And you can yeah. just, you can hit it and then you hit them. And, and you hit it and then you have a very sticky flaming object. We're in our basement, fucking Mark lights this bitch and then with the paddle, and it, thunk, right on the drywall. Bro, it went <laughs> up. We, That's great. If, it, <laughs> if we didn't have an extinguisher handy, oh we God. might have burned the house down. So did you guys? Mark was banned from my parents' house for a little while after that. <laughs> did you guys play with uh, model rockets? Only yeah. a little bit. Yeah, right. a camp and shit. So we found uh, like a, the, the tube for a roll of butcher paper, the cardboard tube. Uh-huh. So we're like, oh, we can make a bazooka. Yeah. We could fire them on a rocket. Out, oh, right, yes. Out of, uh-huh. you know, and so we set it all up. It took a while. And then my friend was like, oh, what we should do is, you know, because a rocket launches off the ground. Yeah. So we'll take a Frisbee, cover it in tinfoil, and that'll it'll launch off that. For back pressure. And I'm like, you know, I've seen bazookas. They're open-ended. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, no, 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 it'll be fine. So <laughs> he fired. But we're, shotguns aren't. I don't know. <laughs> and so we're, we're like this tunnel, like a storm drain tunnel. So we're firing into the tunnel. And that one is a, it launches fine. But, of course, the flame comes out. Melts everything <laughs> on his shoulder. <laughs> and, it, and, of course, he made a strap for it. So, like, the flames bounce onto the cardboard, too. And it's, like, stuck to the burning I mean, thing. Oh, oh my but God. As, <laughs> as he's doing this, and we're all doing this at him, the rocket goes into the tunnel, and somehow turns around, <laughs> and it comes out, and, so like, <laughs> well, those kids on fire. Yeah, it was... Was uh, it a pretty big... It was, like, a model rocket, not, uh, it, not like, a bottle rocket thing, right? No, so not a bottle rocket. rocket. Yeah, it, so the propellant was, yeah, yeah. Yeah. would last, they, like, Yeah, the five, one that has, seconds. like, motors in it. Got yeah, it, they, it. Well, I don't know what it was, but they go up, and then yeah. the parachute, and they yeah. come down. But it was yeah, hysterical. Yeah. Yeah. It was, like, model rocket, not bottle rocket. Yeah, yeah, it was... But, like, just seeing... I think it's Chris Wygan. Shout out if you're listening. <laughs> it was uh, my buddy. That, that was uh, like seventh grade in grade school. His dad was a shop teacher, so he had tools and things, and he liked to show us how to build things in order to like occupy our time. So he helped us build a potato gun, oh, nice. which for 
young people listening, you basically take PVC pipe, you close one end, you spray lighter fluid in it, shove a potato in the end, and then light the fluid, and then whoom. So he installed uh, one of those clickers from the barbecue, so you didn't have to like right. light it with a flame, yeah. you just held it. We shot it once. <laughs> it went a full a full neighborhood block. It hit a stop sign. The nice. stop sign went, whoa, 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 yeah, whoa. Yeah. And he was like, put that back in the garage. And he never let us touch it again. Do you remember the Hennessy potato gun? Yes. We went down to oh, Hennessy yeah, in yeah, Texas. Yeah. They had, and their like shop nerds had oh, built yeah, this yeah. like insane potato gun <laughs> out of like- Texas a, style? Yeah, out of like <laughs> an metal. arc welder. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Dude, yeah. this thing would fire potatoes <laughs> like a mile. It was, it was fucking crazy. <laughs> truly ballistic. Yeah. Yeah. Like really... only a Texan can do. It, it is fun at John's shop. Because like, <laughs> yeah. it, it's always like, well, that thing over there's got a thousand horsepower. Yeah. Drag race it. You know, it's like, yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, L'chaim? Cool. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah, yeah, Welcome. yeah. yeah. L'chaim. What, are, what are we sipping All today? All right, so. Johnny has brought us a, a special bottle of something. Well, I heard. Ooh, well, that is good. Complex. This is like a thirty-second finish. Hmm. So this is Binder Stash. So, wow, that's great. My buddy Bill Binder and my other buddy Drew Stoddard. So Stoddard Spirits is the parent company. Binder uh-huh. Stash is the label. Um, it's a great looking label. Yeah, Classy. it's really, really high end. Yeah. yeah. So they started this this brand. Ooh. Um, this is uh, a, a bottle called Furioso, which we'll talk about in a second. Not trademarking the new Not movie. Furioso. Uh, uh, it's Furioso. George oh, Miller. This, this yeah. is the male version of Furiosa. Yes. Um, Mad, a, Mad Max Dog 2020 is their other <laughs> the spirit they make. So this Sounds is good, Zach. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Mad Max Dog is good. Yeah. This is a 10-year. It's 59.4% alcohol or 118.18 proof. And it's bottle number 135. This bottle, Furious O, just won gold medal at the San Francisco Spirit Awards. Cool. For, I think, single barrel bourbon. Congratulations. So, yeah. And is, I, that, is that available for sale? That's all gone. No, uh, it, it's been all gone for it, months. But it, yeah. but it was it was I available. Did, I actually did purchase this yeah. with my own money. Yeah. Cool. So, which was, you know. I will what, say this is one of the most interesting whiskeys I've drank. What's that? This is one of the most interesting whiskeys I've drank. Like, the, it, at the start, it was very spicy and kind of a lot, a lot of flame. Of, you get that but rye. then it got real smooth and syrupy. It's, it's definitely. Definitely a little later. syrupy on the end. It's it's stuck to my tongue yeah. a bit. Yeah, to I me, like it. Yeah, it's great. To me, I'm getting. I've never had it before. I'm, just, I'm trying to. Th- uh, I was talking too much, but it's high rye, lots of cinnamon, which usually is a good indicator. Oh, good indicator of yeah, rye. Yeah, like hint a little hint of fireball. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I just, I'm just gonna, yeah, just yeah. A, I'm just gonna do a little, a little I mean, dropper, yeah, a little crazy. dropper. We're not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna insult you by <laughs> yeah. putting a. That's okay. Next thing you rock, cook, I'm gonna it. put an ice cube on it. I just want to open. I just want to <laughs> open it. Just Mix it with the Celsius. When I was in when I was in uh, Scotland, I got one of those glass dropper things that looks like it's for drugs. Those are cool. Now, just with a hint of water. I mean, it's like that. Um, yeah, it's like uh, old cinnamon chewing gum. Real, uh, real rye, high ooh, rye, high rye whiskey. Big red. Yeah, big I red. I really like that with this this tiny little splash of water. I really like that. Makes cool. it a fucking sipping drink. Yeah. Thanks, man. And this That's is fantastic. Um, so they they're in they're in uh, Lexington. Oh, cool. Um, but this was distilled in uh, Indiana. So this is from MGP, who makes ninety percent of craft bourbons that are out there. It comes from this like giant industrial facility where they make the best shit, but. Yeah. Then it gets like a label like this put on it. It's but the uh, it's the 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 Magna Styre. It's the Magna of, <laughs> the yeah. Magna Styre of, of uh, everything bourbons, that comes yeah. out of the plant is well, uh, Fisker. I don't know, but everything else that comes out of the plant is really Yikes. high quality. You know, the, like the Going and the G Wagon were yeah. coming out of that plant. quality products. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for a while, uh, weren't were Boxsters and Caymans not built there briefly? <sighs> yeah, uh, no, they, they were from Finland. There were, but there was like that Peugeot thing was built there. Uh, yeah, you know, maybe the original Boxster. I think the, for, a yeah, the first, first gen, gen Boxster right. might yeah. have been you, built I th- there, I too. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah I mean, they're amazing. Whatever. Yeah. Good yeah. shit. Oh, yeah. Dude, That's this is... a very nice bottle. Thank you yeah. for sharing. Oh, hell yeah. All right. Hell yeah. And you rolled up in a Lucid Sapphire, which we haven't gotten yeah. to drive yet, but everyone says is great. Uh, yeah, so I've been getting a lot of things like, Camisa said it's the best handling car of all time. So I will, I will say... It's not the best handling car I've driven this week, let alone of all time. <laughs> but I was telling Zach, it is the fastest car on the mountain. Like, whatever else you want to say about it, you could you could hate EVs, you could you know what whatever else you want to say, nothing will go up a road the way this does. It is just bon- I, I've never seen 140 miles an hour so frequently. We were talking like, to our name drop incoming, our pal Ben Collins. 
Yeah, the oh, former yeah. Stig. Yeah, yeah. That's not a name drop. Ben, Ben's a development engineer on this thing. Well, yeah, yeah. Ben, ben is the man. He's yeah, he's fucking, great. He's yeah, a G I love, unit, I love ben. and yeah, he's yeah. a sweetheart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, when he was running it up the hill at Goodwood, yeah, he was just he couldn't say enough amazing things about about the level of performance that this thing has. And it's it, it's there's a little bit of a learning curve, and the learning curve is it's just about as fast in corners as it is in straights because, you know. Let's say the rear axle in cuckoo pants mode is making 800 horsepower, right? So it's got two motors on the rear. Each one is capable of 670, but they're only making 400 each. Mm -hmm. Does the real torque vectoring where one, because it's not maxed out as you turn to the left, the right outside so motor it overdrives it. will go up to 600. The bottom one will maybe drop to 200, but it keeps a constant 800 horsepower on mm -hmm. the rear mm -hmm. through corners. And... You just got to learn that you can do that. So, like, I basically... That's the kind of shit that, like, people talk about with, like, a downforce car. It's, it's exactly the same thing. It takes, like, it takes a while. Oh, yeah, I can rely on this. Yeah. But I would say, and uh, my buddy Aaron was chasing me. He's, like, a modified Model 3. is chasing me up the hill. I overbroke the first... 50 corners. Like, there was no reason to hit the brakes. There was just literally no reason. But I was just like, I'm going 125. And then it was like, oh, yeah, shit. I'm, I'm way too slow. And then on the way down, I was like, I'm going to try and do nine mile without touching the brake pedal. And I, I think I touched it like three times. And I was Yeah, that doesn't seem possible to do the whole thing. Well, remember, you get, you, if you come off, you get a little heavy, bit of regen. Heavy regen. Yeah, there's you, a couple you can, of those. You can there's it. a couple like there's two straightaways on that road where if you don't hit the brake at the end, you're dying. Yeah, I mean well, literally, especially it, in a fast car where you're accelerating on the straight. It, 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 in a car it, like that, you could hit. It's a really, a, fast, it's yeah. a really fast. I believe car. you that yeah. it's really fast. Yeah. but like that road downhill, like you do have to brake. Um, yeah, or you you just you lift. You have to. I was lifting, and remember when which you is, lift, you get yeah, breaking. You get yeah, regen, yeah, 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 which yeah. is which sort. It's yeah. not a full break, but I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, but no, it's it's uh, it's. I drove that downhill in the Z06 this morning. Like, trust me, yeah. you have to break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, remember the Z06 when you lift, you just keep going yeah, that fast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's uh, it's a it's a it's you know I'd like. I, I just got it yesterday, but, you know, I'd like more time in it. But so there's <clears throat> modes we care about. There's sapphire mode, mm -hmm. which is like 1,120 horsepower. Then there's three track modes. So there's track launch control, which is the full That's 1,200. Track mode. Yeah. Yeah. 1,234. Then there's hot lap uh, mode, track hot lap, which is like 1,000 horsepower. But, uh, and then there's like endurance, right? And I think the the Ionic Five N Ionic Five N has these same modes: and it's, drag race, qualifying, and then track day. Right. Basically. So this is, is yeah, this yeah. is a hot lap and endurance, and so endurance yeah. is like 800 horsepower. Yeah. But and what's cool is when you're in the track mode, then you can play with traction control more. You know, in Sapphire mode, you just get whatever Sapphire mode is. But uh, it was like you know I was going full speed as I'm playing with these modes. So in track mode, it kept saying like battery conditioning, and I was like, you know what, Sapphire, eleven. 120 horsepower, good enough. Sufficient. Yeah, and uh, it was just stupid. Sufficient. Yeah. yeah, I really, I want to have a go. I mean, I, I drove tur uh, Tycon Turbo GT, which was great. and I bet you it's real similar. Yeah. yeah. It was so fast that it became uncomfortable quickly. Well, you know? so, <laughs> so, so, so Aaron and, and these two other uh, New Zealander dudes were like, can we get a ride? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And I kind of did the thing where I slowly rolled out. And then without saying anything or looking at them, I just like punched it. Yeah. One guy's sunglasses flew off. Another guy's like, I haven't had sweaty palms ever. You know, yeah. and like you could tell they were getting car sick. I just gave a, a quote to, I want to say it was, uh, I don't, it was a nor something that's normally TV but has writing like NBC or something like that. Yeah. Um, about the 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 trend. Not, not, I don't mean like TikTok trend, but like the the the. The incidences of people getting nauseous in EVs. Yeah. And, like, why that happens and, you know, noise versus feeling and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Really fast. If you want to make somebody sick, yeah. you don't need a McLaren. You need a Lucid or a Tycon GT. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, re I remember when, when the, when the not even the Plaid, when the Ludicrous uh, yeah. Model uh, S came out. I mean, it would passengers would get sick. They just don't know what's happening because yeah. there's no indicator. You just hit the thing yeah you know, and and you know you have instant yeah it's not you know even in even in a gas powered drag car you're not launching it at peak power it's right. still it's it building. builds a little bit yeah this i will i mean this thing on the freeway is just it it's it's uh, again this is a this is a a, a generalization a characterization of how fast it actually is but like 
it doesn't feel like it's accelerating. It feels like you just see a point and mm-hmm. then you just swap. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, like you know, yeah, they'd yeah, say yeah. Like, particles yeah. will blink out of existence. And <laughs> yeah. blink. That's what it is hitting it's a hole in the freeway. It's just a teleportation device. You're just there already. It's, it's fun. Cause when you're in Sapphire on the freeway and you're just like, I got to get around this guy. It's just, it's, yeah. and it's like, you know, you look down, oh shit, 110. Like, whoa. But that hit in the back is really fun. Even in the Ionic 5N, which has half the power, from like 20, 30, 40, you still smash it. Yeah. And you just get punched with all the torque and you're yeah. just, whoop, and you're just up to 100. And I, I think I, I'd lo- I got to drive that car because I've heard, like I said, I was telling you, I've heard nothing but wonderful things about yeah. it. Um, and like, you know, like, look, the, the Lucid, as we were talking about, like, you know, it's 96% of the way engineered. Like, the, <laughs> like you know, they can't figure out door handles. Johnny had <laughs> five seconds of panic in uh, front of me Sheer today. panic. It was amazing. <laughs> Folks, we got to take one quick break for Auto Tempest. They are sponsoring our show today, and we love Auto Tempest. Man, whenever I'm looking for a car on the internet, whether it's an old car or a new car, I want to cast a wide net. I don't want to type in the same uh, search criteria over and over into a dozen different websites. What a waste of time. That's why Auto Tempest is the best. It brings together listings from all the top sites online like cars.com, True Car, eBay Motors, Carvana, and many, many more. So you can get them all in one place rather than having to search a bunch of sites separately. Right now, I am uh, on the lookout for a very, very specific uh, collector vehicle. I don't know if I'm actually going to buy it. It depends how much they are. But at least a couple of times a week, I'm checking Auto Tempest nationally right? Comparing Auto Tempest results for, uh, with Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist nationwide, not just my local area, to see if one of these things pop up. And if it does, I am on it. Plus, Auto Tempest now has apps for iOS and Android, so you can use the website or have Auto Tempest right there on your home screen. Auto Tempest has all the cars with one search. Head over to autotempest.com slash tire right now so they know we sent you. That's autotempest.com slash tire and start searching for your next car. Also brought to you today by Tinker. Tinker, it's a new mobile app that offers one-on-one live help for auto DIYers and lets them work with uh, Tinker certified automotive experts instantly via live video chat for quick answers for all car topics. It's like having a pro mechanic in your pocket for all those burning car questions. Whether you're a seasoned car hobbyist with a weekend build or just trying to save some time and money doing auto repairs yourself, Tinker's got you covered. All the experts are vetted or have professional mechanic experience or ASC certifications. The app is currently available for download on the Apple Store. And uh, you guys know that I cannot be trusted on my own to work on cars. But with Tinker, I get the confidence of an expert looking over my shoulder that can help me get the job done. Right now, we're trying to diagnose an electrical issue on uh, Hannah's uh, Nissan POW. And uh, the Tinker expert actually did point me in the right direction. It was a very easy process. I'm just trying to make the thing run right. It was like randomly dying. It turns out there's a very specific fuse that has a short in it. So whether you're trying to avoid going to the mechanic and getting a big bill when the uh, headlights you ordered installed aren't working, or whether you've got a weird Japanese car that nobody wants to work on at all, Tinker has got you. Head over to the Apple App Store right now and download the Tinker app. It's like having a pro mechanic in your pocket. Five (laughs) seconds of panic in Uh, front of me today. Sheer panic. It was amazing. So we 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 were commiserating over the fact that the proximity sensors with this with all lucid seven and a half feet are a nightmare. (laughs) And so if you're milling about the car at a cars and coffee, lock unlock, lock unlock. Yeah. And Johnny goes, ugh, fuck this. I'm just gonna throw the key in the car. (laughs) Brilliant (laughs) maneuver. Oh my god. What a smart (laughs) move. Ten minutes later, he's like. Farah, <laughs> the, the handles are closed. <laughs> the key is in the car. No. But it was also it does it has that anti theft thing when when it's when it's locked and you try and touch the handle they like tuck in so yeah. you can't pry them out. So all I'm doing every handle they're all tucking in and I'm like <gasps> and then as Matt started laughing at me it just opened up. Yeah, and then it just opened itself. Then it just decided to open. But it, it was like thirty panic. seconds of like. Oh my God! Yeah. Like I'm up Somebody here. Somebody lucid there's has no, an amazing sense of humor. There's no, there's no telephones. <laughs> <laughs> That's not. I need to test Sarah's because Sarah's rest, rest for us proximity, and you can just swipe the top of a handle; it locks. Yeah. And she tested. She walked away and walked back, and it didn't unlock automatically. 
Yeah, like, you, you probably have to detach have, the handle. It's have, just not a perfect. It, it kind of knows, like, oh, you just came back to check something. You don't uh, want to unlock it anymore. I think Lucid goes, oh, you're back? Like, do you want to come in and play? Yeah, it's like, like a dog. God. Yes, it's it is. A, it's Lucid's exactly like a, a dog. dog, and the RAV4 <laughs> hybrid is a cat. Yes. If I, forget <laughs> my, if I forget something and I leave and I come back to the dog, he's like, you're back already? I'm like, actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, but, like, like, Rivian's funny because, like, you know, if you, if you approach it from the front or the side, it works great. It just it works the way you want it to work. If you walk up behind the car, yeah. it doesn't know you're there. <laughs> and the, what I learned a though, it's like a it's like a deaf dog. Yeah, but what I learned <laughs> is if, if if you if you tap your cell phone against the door handle, it just opens, and it's fine. If you have the key card, the no, irony, no, any, any cell phone. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> all no, cell phones. No, the app that's running, or the phone that's running the Rivian app. So yeah, wait, yeah. up there, did you put your phone in the car, or you put the oh, key I, card? I, in I the put car. the key card in the, the the in the car because it was literally like every two seconds. And, I know. You know God, I was just like, yeah, I'm just gonna. Yeah, and I didn't put the windows down. Just yeah. a fucking that would have been idiot. yeah, that, yeah, that would have been the move, move right? <laughs> we have here at WZZS, we have like rules about what to do with keys. Like you never so leave we. the key in a car. You never, you know, blah blah blah. Listen, we're all hypocrites. The amount of times I've yelled at people, new people at Motor Trend, like, hey, never put a key in the car with the window up. Yeah, yeah. Don't put a key on top of the windshield wiper. Yeah, because we had one yeah. time where it was like an M3. And like we drove, it turned on, you know, <laughs> drove it somewhere, couldn't find the key, couldn't yeah. find the key. And like hours later, it was somebody had put it on top of the windshield. We'd gone on the freeway. Had it stayed? It just it sat was there. there. It was oh, in the okay. pocket. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. But it was like, uh, it's a little mist and someone hits the thing, goes, ring. It's like, but you know, <laughs> people don't know. They'll come up with all kinds of creative sure. places and ways to do things. Well, yeah, yeah. the greatest story I've heard from Lemons is when we went, I think, Sonoma in 2012, <laughs> someone blew oh, their engine. Yeah. <laughs> so they send one of their teammates to a junkyard two hours south to pick up an engine. Excellent. They get in, so they get in, I think it was a Chrysler product, they get in the car, they drive down, they get the engine, or the part they needed, and then they try to get back in the car, car won't start because someone had the key in their pocket. Just so, nearby. So they had like started their charter and said, Johnny, you yeah, go oh, get the sure, thing. Sure. And they were like, what the fuck? <laughs> I've, I've done similar things. Yeah. That, that actually has happened many times. Yeah. yeah especially like on, on video shoots yeah. where someone goes to lunch with the key in their pocket. Sure. You know, that was, I'm at God, uh, speaking of Camisa, you, years ago we were doing Model X versus Bentayga. Mm. And we were out in Joshua Tree, and it was like 45 minutes one way to get lunch or whatever. And like the guy in the van leaves, and like 10 minutes later, the director's like, Where's the whatever lens? And they're like, It's in the van. It was like, oh, and it was, we would have had to be down for like two hours. So I was just like, the I, only lens. <laughs> yeah, well, the one they needed for yeah. the. But I like, I hopped in the Bentega, and that's when I decided that, like, despite how stupid it looks, that's a very fast car. <laughs> Bentega is <laughs> a real fast. It's a real fast. You seen the new like silly edition Bentega that just came nah. out with carbon wheels? <laughs> Excellent, just what it needs. All of a sudden, it's the. This is so crazy. We have learned nothing. Like all the, all the cracked carbon wheels on the Shelby's and the Corvette and the fucking Ferraris. Yeah. And who's going to do carbon wheels? Range Rover and <laughs> ben, Bentley perfect. on their SUVs. Like, guys, perfect. We, let's knock well, this shit off. The problem off. with the carbon wheels before was there wasn't enough weight on them. <laughs> no. Oh. Now that you... No, I'm kidding. And now that you oh, another ton, they're going to crack more. Yeah. yeah, yeah the Bentega has the largest carbon fiber wheel in the world. Is it, is it a 23? Uh, or 20, is it a 20? It can't be a 24. I 22. Mean, 22. 22. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah... So, the Range but, Rover, the, the new Range Rovers got them too. Yeah, probably, they, they did this. It looks like in 2021, so they were ahead of Range Rover. Oh, but you get carbon wheels on a Bentayga in 21? Yeah, I thought that press release, unless <laughs> unless that email just resurfaced in my inbox, fucking four <laughs> I need, years I, late. I need to show you inbox filters. We've talked about this because yeah. your email is a mess. Is it? This thing was 2021. Yeah. Oh, so that's the announcement of the wheel. There's a new. There is a new Bentley. Bentega, the the car that this is for, and, and I bet Matt's right. It's on twenty threes it. now. It's probably twenty three because you know it's it's really the, pre, the, the press shot. The thing is like fire engine red. Yeah, yeah, which is actually a pretty good color if it's on like a GT. Yeah, is this the uh, I mean, Apex any, any, anything? Yeah, Apex, Apex edition. Oh, yeah. that's finally, <laughs> the king of product nobody asked for, and that's ah. absolutely a twenty three. Hundred percent as a twenty three drops. Nice, still horrible looking. <laughs> it, yeah, yeah, it doesn't look great. I agree with you. Those cars drive they, great. It really did. I was they like, drive I, mean, I was, I was, great. I was like hundred and twenty some odd miles an hour. Twenty two inch wheel. 
22. Oh, wow. That, that looks like, I would have guessed 23, but that's, that's the same wheel. wheel. That's the same, same wheel. wheel. Yeah. She had Sorry, 97 Johnny, I pounds. Those. Okay. Yeah. No, no, I was just saying, I, I was, I chased down a van at 120 miles an hour for like 10 minutes, and I was like, this thing's kind of better than I thought it was. They drive great. But they look, so, <clears throat> I, I, they I've told this story, but Giles Taylor, who used to be the head of design for Rolls Royce, when... Before the Cullinan w- was even a thing, but I knew they were working on it, mm. he was, uh, uh, we had a lot of champagne one evening, and he was making fun of how this looked. And I remember Freddie he said, he goes, you know when you're fishing and you got a fish on the boat and it's like in that moment between life and death? That's the face <laughs> of the Bentayga. Oh, so <laughs> and I can't look at it without seeing like yeah, a cross fish. It's not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, I mean, let's talk about cars that, that, Think of a car, other than the Bentega, <laughs> where you want to drive it, but you don't want to be seen in it. Calling in. Uh, C- C8 Z06. Really? I do not like the way that car looks. I, don't I like think it looks C8. a lot better than the regular it C8. It does, but I still don't like the way it looks. Huh. Pretty I'll much. tell you what, I, last I night. But it drives <laughs> fan-fucking-tastic. It's unbelievable. It drives, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last Fun night, car. Thaddeus and I went to the McLaren party up in the Hollywood Hills. Oh. I didn't our, get For uh, Artura Spider. Nice. Um, huh. Lots of influencers, lots of McLaren customers. You, you would think this is my uh, buddy Jethro is married to the PR lady. She I wasn't in there. Her. I know, but she you was, think but, I get it. But you, you know, think. You, you know what? I might have been invited to that. I take it all back. You're the greatest. <laughs> I, I turned, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did get invited to that. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. So, <laughs> yeah. So, it was, you know, we drove the Z06 okay, up there. Yeah, perfect. And as we are going up the hill, it's at the fucking top, 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 top of the Hollywood Hills in like a $50 million house. And as we're, we realized the people we are seeing going for walks in the evening around the bird streets and the Hollywood, they're looking us, at us like we are straight garbage. Oh, right. Like, <laughs> like you're, you're, in, you're like an STI, we're like tra- vaping. We are so <laughs> trashy yeah, yeah. in this electric right. blue <laughs> yeah. Z06. Sure. People, are, and, and every driveway is Range Rover, G-Wagon, Cullen, and GT3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's ballers up there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah they're, they're looking at you, they're going, American. They're looking at us <laughs> like, yeah. Like, I didn't call an Uber. Like, what, <laughs> what, right, are, you, right, what are you right. doing up here? Um, well, those are some special people. Like I, um, I'm sure you guys heard about the uh, insane uh, electric G wagon party at the reservoir they had. <laughs> yeah, with like Travis Scott and shit. <laughs> I, I didn't get invited to that one. Well, uh, I did, and um, <laughs> it, it, uh, I didn't like Travis Scott at all. But uh, I was trying to get up there to park, and apparently, like, and this, this guy like waved me through, so I went all the way up to the reservoir. And then the guy up there was like, no, 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 you have to go to the other entrance. Like, turn around. Yeah. And I was like, come on, man. I'm already up here. He's like, no. And I was like, oh. So as I'm going down, I was going to tell the guy in the bottom, I was going to say, like, hey, you shouldn't let people up here. They're not letting anyone in. Because, mm-hmm. you know, it's a good, you know, 15 minutes up and back. As I rolled down my window to say that, or actually I was in a convertible, uh, there's three <laughs> women who were hiking. And, uh, you know, they, they – very few body parts they were born with were visible. <laughs> and uh, this one lady's like, what? You, well, you can't drive there. That's not allowed or something like that. And I got to go, listen, lady. <laughs> she let me through. <laughs> Anytime I can do a listen, lady. Listen, it's, lady. It's a, that's a treat to use that yeah, one. Listen, lady. So speaking of parking and up on the hills, um, this McLaren party had valet parking. Sure. Oh, yeah. On uh, these the, tiny little... And, and Give them the Z06. <laughs> right. So there, I was like, yeah, fine. A but, car, yeah. but the line to Valet Park was no bueno. And so Thaddeus and I like ducked off a side street and we street parked. Great. We got there and uh, I saw uh, Scott uh, from Motor Trend. Yeah, Scott, Scott Evans. Uh, Scott Evans, yeah. Yeah, Scott Evans and, and his missus. And the, <laughs> he goes, dude, you're not going to believe this. And I go, I bet whatever you're going to say, I will, but okay. Here, let me have it. And he goes, none of the valets can drive stick. Oh, that's There's good. There's like 30 valets there. He's driving in a Mira press car. Perfect. And he goes, they told me to park down the hill because nobody here can drive stick. And I'm like, you've got a valet event for sports car owners specifically, and no valets can drive stick. I hope nobody brought their singer. You know? Dude. Yeah. No, there was a couple uh, air-cooled cars uh-huh. that were like, parked up front right and it was clearly like just leave it here man right right yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> i mean we're getting to that point mm-hmm. we're just getting to that point where it's, yeah. it's just a lost art you yeah. know it's it's but it's weird because like valets they usually have at least valets one guy are gearheads get the, they always have yeah. one guy yeah. But, yeah yeah like i remember i was in um 
San Diego. I don't remember what I was driving, but it was they were like, "Oh, get get Dudley. Like he yeah. can drive. You know, he knows how to drive stick." Oh, dude! Shout out to the Manchester Hotel in Lexington, Kentucky. The valet guy there was driving a mint, 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 mint '96 Mystic Cobra. Wow! And he had it really? parked right up front. Good for him. And I pulled in in the fucking Bentley, and I and the guy's like, "Oh, can road and track. Okay, you can park yourself." And I stop and I go, "Whose is that?" And he goes, "That's mine." And I was like, "You're the fucking <laughs> man, dude." And he's like, "You care about my car?" I'm like, "That's a Mystic, dude. Yeah. Of course I do. That's awesome." And then I fucking flipped him a twenty, and then we were best friends nice. for like three days. That's so. how it works. Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tip tip your valets. Uh, three of the valets at the Manchester drove Mustang Cobras. Really? Really? Yeah, well, two what? two SN ninety fives and one New Edge. Well, Kentucky. Kentucky. But I mean, Cobras are yeah, Cobras are also it's undervalued. Yeah. yeah, probably undervalued. Don't say it. Don't say it because you know they're great cars. Cobras are fun. They're fucking. Why good. didn't you buy that red one? Did Why we, didn't I buy the red yeah, one? Yeah, we, we were we found one on the internet, and you were like, "Ooh, you're tempted." It's because it wasn't exactly the right one. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it was. If I yeah, I know. We, I know. We got to get in the game. You can't fucking bitch about things being too expensive. If you're not in the game, Thad spent 25 minutes in the car yesterday trying to convince me that a 968 Club Sport is somehow a good idea. That's what he does. A yeah. good idea? It's I mean, not it's a, a good if, idea. If you're really rich and like have a place to stick it's a great it. like 12th car, I guess. It's a great, yeah. It's like a you know, it's a conversation piece of your collection. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, you know, it's funny. Like, remember the white collection? <laughs> what? It's pronounced what, Johnny? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The white collection. Yeah. Um, uh, that that uh, that uh, investment company I'm, I'm kind of consulting for, they were like, "Is there anything you would get out of this?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I'd get the 924 Club Sport. Like that that is that is the car to get." You ever of drive this. one of them? Uh, Club Sport? No. Yeah. 924s are Doesn't not. Doesn't Magnus great. own a Club Sport? A 924 Club Sport? Folks, just one more quick break for Delete Me. Listen, Delete Me is, this is a really valuable thing. You guys need to know about this because I bet there's a lot more of you on the internet than you know. I bet there's a lot more of you on the internet than you'd want people to really know about, right? Have you or someone you know been a victim of identity theft, harassed, scammed, or just annoyed by spam and, and robocalls? My parents, someone were able, was able to steal uh, their identity and open duplicate bank accounts for them in a different state and take out lines of credit against them, all from stuff they got off the internet, and that's why I made sure my parents started using Delete Me to, uh, to hide themselves digitally. There's so much of your personal data out there for anyone to see, your name, contact info, social security number, etc. cetera. Uh, it's all being compiled by data brokers and openly sold online. Anyone on the web can get your private details that can lead to exactly the things that I just talked about. That's why you need Delete Me. Right? Delete me finds and removes any personal information you don't want online and makes sure it stays off. It's a subscription service that removes your info from the largest people search databases on the web and in the process helps prevent potential ID theft, doxing, phishing scams, and more. Right? Just sign up and provide Delete Me with exactly what information you want deleted. Then Delete Me sends you regular personalized privacy reports showing what info they found, where they found it, and what they removed. Delete Me is not just a one-time service. Delete Me is always working for you, constantly monitoring and removing the personal information you don't want on the internet. To put it simply, Delete Me does all the hard work of wiping you and your family's personal info off the web. Data brokers, brokers hate Delete Me, so when you sign up, Delete Me immediately goes to work scrubbing all your information from data broker platforms. Your personal profile is no longer theirs to sell. Take control of your data and keep your private life private by signing up for Delete Me now at a special discount for our listeners. Get 20% off your Delete Me plan when you go to joindeleteme.com slash tire and use promo code tire at checkout. That's join deleteme.com slash tire and enter code tire at checkout. Join deleteme.com slash tire, enter code tire. And thank you to Delete Me for sponsoring today's podcast. Don't know, but this guy named Jerry Seinfeld wound up buying that car. Oh, really? It's the only thing he bought out of the Mm -hmm. white collection. And, like, they're just rad. You know? I mean, the, I I get that a 924, 944, or 968 Club Sport is a cool thing. Yeah. I totally get that. Yeah. I've just never been 
impressed enough by any front engine Porsche that I felt it was worth a, a major premium. Yeah, not for someone like Seinfeld, for which for who money does not matter. But well, he would he real, would argue money matters. Uh, but he would be wrong. But he's he's got you know he's he's got he's got big garages to fill. Um, and it, 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 but it, 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 objectively, it was a cool car. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's cool. You know, it's cool. Yeah. But if if you if you're you know working for a living. Yeah, Mo- yeah. Most air cooled 911s that are nicely sorted are more interesting to drive and mm-hmm. own than a 924 Club Sport. Well, I've never driven a Club Sport. But that's, that's, you know. I drove a 968 Club Sport and I found it to be nice mm-hmm. and responsive and fun. But considering what they cost to own and cost to maintain the and ma- cost the to maintenance repair, is wild. Yeah. Dude, they made those for so few years. Well, yeah, it was a race car. Yeah. No one knows how to work There's on it. There's no yeah. fucking parts. I no. mean, you, if yeah, you yeah. need one little thing for that, why is this $2,000? Because we made <laughs> 300 of them ever. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 no, yeah. They don't exist. But it's, uh, I mean, it's a killer looking car. Look at it that. does look rad. Yeah. No, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Looks, yes. Yeah. And the 968's got the, it's like triple yellow, you know? Like oh, like yeah, yeah, Full yeah. monochrome. I think they had, uh, I think it was just black, but I think there was a 968 Club Sport at Airwater that was like pretty Black would be, taste, would be pretty tasteful. Yeah. There's, the, there's the one that's like maritime blue or like that sort, of, that. Uh, that sort of aqua blue that's but what, but pretty real quick, What about 928? Like a good 928, like a GTS or something. Have you ever? I've driven a really good one. And No. It's a very nice thing to drive that it, that to me wouldn't stay special for long enough to justify what they cost to keep running. That's what Musto had, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. it really nice, but it just felt like a Porsche Corvette. Yeah. And, well, and, I mean, and, it kind but, of is a Porsche Corvette. And, yeah. and it was – his was really sorted out and really nice to drive and beautiful. But I remember driving it and thinking – Sound, emotion, seating, all of those things were really familiar if you've driven American cars. But he had to change, like, just the intake piping. And, oh. like, and it was, like, thousands of dollars. dollars. Yeah. Hard to find. Never do it again. So I, I had a boss in New York uh, when I lived there, and he had a 928 uh, GTS. It was a 94? Yeah, I, nine, I think say. GTSs are 93, 94. Yeah, I think it was a 94. Yeah. And he rode a motorcycle around Manhattan, and, you know, he knew I liked cars. And he was just like... Do me a favor. Once a month, take your girlfriend, whatever. Just go upstate, drive around. You know. Yeah. So it was great. I was like, yeah. And then when I was moving to LA, he goes, "I'll sell it to you for ten grand." Now, this was in '99 or yeah. so. I, mean, it was, no, I moved in 2001. So the car was you know seven years old. It was over a hundred grand new. Yeah. Back then, and, hindsight probably would have been a good buy. But he goes, "It's ten grand." But it's a hundred thousand dollar car. I yeah, just yeah. had the window motors replaced, and the it was seven hundred bucks each, and this is in two thousand one dollars yeah. for the motors, not counting labor. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it just scared me to death. I yeah. was like, I can't afford that. Yeah, and yeah. they haven't got any cheaper to fix. Oh, they're much more expensive. Yeah, yeah. they're they're <laughs> extremely pleasant to drive. But yeah. the thing about front engine Porsches is, to me, that experience of a front engine rear drive sporty GT yeah. is available from a bunch of different places. I for me with a 928, I like the real early like 77, uh-huh. 78. You know, they're just funky, weird cars, and the with real like, late, like light green over Pasha. Yeah, yeah. perfect brown Pasha yeah, with light yeah, green. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Galpin's got one of those. It's like a launch edition. It yeah. just looks insane. Yeah, well, he would, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, but like uh, my buddy, you know Jeff Charon, he's got yeah. like a brown one. Yeah, with just, I think just I think it's just black interior, but it's like a 78. It's yeah, just, it's just great. It's just great. Um. Yeah, and and it's just the looks. Like there's, I think sometimes Kuntosh, there are cars that are so good looking, everything's forgivable. Sure. And for me, like a 928 is, yeah, like, I forgive all. Yeah, know? there's a there's a there's a bunch of cars like that. Uh, there's a bunch of cars like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any any Al- Alpha no. 8C. Any Aston Martin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> most, almost. Almost. Most for uh, yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, most I was for sure. we were talking about it. Like I drove the DB12 Volante. Yeah. And you know, I could nitpick a lot of things. Oh, but go go. On. We had, did have a specific question for yeah, you about it. And then, it. you know, put the top down and, like, who cares about anything in the world? And then get out and look at it. It's like, yep, I yep. made the best decision this this is, one can this make. This is excellent. <laughs> pull, if you can pull up that picture, yeah. it's, it's on my Instagram. Yeah. When you like look at it parked. and you have, like, a, 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 a nice set of sweepers that you're going up, yeah. it's like, it's that, just like, yeah, no notes. This is good. Look, look this, at that. Yeah. I, I, I was literally, I went out to, like, put money in the meter. And I just was like, God, you know, and I walked to that side because the sun was better. This is just parked by a jack-in-the-box. Like, yeah. Look at that. 
<laughs> yeah. Like, and they drive yep. pretty good too. Pretty damn good. Yeah. Pretty and, damn and, good. And, and that engine's a hammer. Yeah. In, in this, it's, you know, so the Z06 is 670 horsepower, 671. Yeah. <laughs> they really <laughs> made a turbo. They made a point of that. <laughs> they sure did. But, yeah. uh, and I like their choice to not use rear steer in this car. I think yeah. that's the right choice for this car. Uh, but maybe. So know. the one that we had, I don't know. Is Was it a, a convertible? US bar? Yeah, yeah. Is this yours U.S. spec or Eurospec? Can you spec, see you know? if there's orange markers? I don't. I don't remember. Um, I don't. Was it Zach? Was this the other one that was there when we? They wrote? had three there. I don't remember there. if this one was yeah. there. But point being, every time this was the thing in our in our car, which was a European car, every time you oh, started the, it, the fucking traffic sign, traffic sign and lane keep assist. Yeah, yeah, you have to yeah, turn that off yeah. every time, and it's in the screen so, in the menus. So here's the thing about no that. Bueno. Here's the thing about that. That's just that's Eurospec. So imagine living in the EU now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> every new car you buy beeps if you go over the speed limit. Yeah. By default. But you what if you buy it in Britain because they're not in the EU? I don't Ooh. know. Mm. I, I don't know. Maybe Brexit was a good idea. No, I'm sure. I'm sure. Eng I'm sure the the police state in England was like, oh, <laughs> that's one good thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Keep that. Forget everything else. Uh, the U. Trust me. When I got this, I didn't go on the launch. When I got this, the, the, the guy sent me a video. Oh, he did. Every time you start the car, do this. This is not. And I didn't even mention it when I had the car because okay. I knew. Yeah. No. Look. That. Yes. That's. But. I was on a Mercedes launch a while ago in uh, in uh, in Portugal. I was with uh, Lynn Woodward, and we were driving. And every time you over the speed limit, it was beeping. I'm like, Lynn, turn it off. Like, figure it out. We couldn't couldn't turn it off. And like we, like you know, we pulled over, going through the menus, and I'm like, you can't fucking turn it off. That's oh. not good. And I went back. And I, was, oh, I went to Rob, and I'm like, I remember it was Michael, but one of the PR guys, and I'm like. Literally, I'm gonna say never buy this car, no matter what happens to you, if yeah. that can't be turned off. And he's like, "Oh no, no, it's European rig." Well, so that's what they told us. We drove the the DB12 Volante. It was uh, two and a half months ago. It was yeah. a while ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, we only got it for a day. We didn't get to take it home. So, yeah, yeah. so fine. But what Aston PR told us was that yes, this is a law for Europe, but Aston is quote being proactive about it for the U.S. And I was like, "Oh no." There should be there should be no proactive. Look, about there's a lot this. of good things about America. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of bad ones. One of the bad ones that it works out in a good way is that die. Just yeah, go ahead and don't, die. Don't, you're uh, free to die. No, listen, if you're spending three hundred and fifty thousand dollars on a car, that can't uh, uh, be uh, a part of it. Super sucks. Absolutely. Yeah. No, not. but I could I couldn't believe this fucking Mercedes. You know, it was That's just like good. it was. I don't remember what it was. It was well, something. my wife's uh, Nissan Pow. If you go over a hundred k, yeah, meet me, me, yeah. Me. Well, it's Japan. Yeah, 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 Japan. You know, yeah, the national. There's apparently 70. some kind of fuse you can pull yes. somewhere that makes it not yes, do on, that. On a pow, you could. On yeah. this, no, you're, you're screwed. <laughs> no, on this, you're hoes. But, um, but I look mean, at that. Go back to that picture from the top of the snake. Oh, I mean, come on. Yeah. What is not to love about that? Uh, by the way, that? that was on my iPhone. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shot on iPhone. Billboard. Yeah. Aston Martin. I, oh, that's Shut. not the snake. That's the 39, right? No, no. That's uh, Angela's Crest. That's where, right after the observatory. Oh, Mount oh, Wilson. oh, oh, oh. By yeah. Mount Wilson. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool, I cool. went up there just to get that shot. But yeah. it's, uh, I mean... It's brown on brown, metallic caramel on Sexy. on Cohiba or whatever the yeah. hell the colors are. Like. And the one we had was spectacular Ooh, as well. Yeah. The light blue, like the sky blue, amazing. I mean, they are design wise, you know. And, and look, and, and look, this, you know, if you're gonna go, like, you know, this or a Ferrari, whatever they call them now, Portofino. Yeah, or a Roma. Yeah, yeah well, I like the Roma a lot. I like but the Roma too. I like yeah. the interior of this better, both in terms of aesthetics than Portofino, but also this had more real buttons. Yeah, yeah, but like. Boy, you know, like, yeah, okay, this does not compete with, like, the 296. Fine. But, like, boy, uh, Portofino, you know, the four-seater convertible. Yeah. I ain't buying a Portofino. I, I, I prefer <laughs> this over a Bentley GTC as well. Bentley, yeah. It, you know, I like a Bentley Coupe, but the GTC, the convertible, I'll go Aston over Bentley. But, like, at least now there's a conversation to be had where before mm. it was like, okay, the DBS is great, but you're not really going to buy. I remember Jethro and I did um, – DB11 versus Lexus. Oh my God! Uh, you know, the, the Lexus 11, must have or... embarrassed the DB11. No, no, it was it was it was it was a V8. You know, it was it was they were they were real similar actually. We we gave it to the Aston just because we thought it looked a little better, but uh, or I don't even remember why we gave it to. It, but it was like it was real close. You know what I'm saying? Like like and the Lexus was half the price. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Give, uh, or, give or give take. Or, yes, but, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. But it was like. You know, if you the hard, I, I imagine the hardtop version of this versus the Lexus. Like the Lexus is very nice and all, but come on, you mm -hmm. know. No, like, and the hardtop version of this is excellent. I, yeah, I haven't driven it. Yeah, yeah, it's it. excellent. There's yeah. a couple things about the Bentley that, to me, 
set it up just a, there's like just little shit like you can see the plastic inside of the air vents I mean stuff where it's like sure. in the, in this isn't thing. like a real big deal but, but at 300 yeah, grand exactly you gotta look a little deeper you know no exactly right look look I, you know everyone's like oh this thing has buttons now and you know, they make their own screens and I'm like you know I thought I could, I could read the Mercedes screen a lot better than whatever the hell they put in there <laughs> the font we are talking about that it's a stupid, like, it's free. Oh, the, you gear, can, the gear selector well, the gears, I told him about that, but also you made a good point. The yeah. traction control, when you change it, so they. It's I'm sure it's the, the same Mercedes same yeah. from the AMG uh, 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 GTR. It's the same traction control. You have nine settings. It is like three microns high. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, well, why are you hiding what, what I'm in? You if know? I'm fiddling with, with this. But it's free. <laughs> they yeah, yeah, they yeah. wrote the software. Right. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's a, it's a temporary... It displays temporarily, so why not have it pop up yeah. real big and you go, bu, 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 I'm in six, and then it yeah. goes away. Or, uh, GM Performance, they GM <sighs> Performance, they do, they do it. Well, they have a whole well, movie in the Z06. They, they, hang, well, hang on, like, hang on, mode. Mode. Hang on. Hang on. It's, a, it's got a trailer for the next Top Gun. That <laughs> they <comes up. laughs> did it, but I but I remember years ago with the I think it, it was the C6 Z06, uh-huh. and we had the whole GM Performance guys out, and we were like. I think it, it was, I can't remember what year it was. Anyways, we were at Laguna Seca, and I was like, team, come with me. And I'm like, this is an AMG. And I'm like, cling, cling, cling. Like, now I know what mode I'm in. This yeah, is yeah. your Corvette. Like, double tap just the right way. Yeah, yeah, And maybe yeah. you'll get a screen to pop up. And, you know, I'm like, I'm like, put a big, like, go, go get a Marantz tuner. Yeah, Like, from yeah. the 70s. And when the Z- C8 yeah, came the out, C8 I was came like, out. <laughs> I'm not taking credit, but I'm taking all the credit. Yeah. <laughs> you still have to do it, the double tap to get to the thing. Yeah. But, like, you only need to be taught it once, fortunately. But, but like, like it's just, it's just have big, chunky things. Yeah, like yeah. the people that buy those cars, it's you're not you know like the guy in the Z06 accidentally went into track mode. Ah! <laughs> Although know? Zach brought up a good point, the 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 torque resistance mm-hmm. on that big beautiful knob yeah. is actually quite high. Yeah, and if you did have arthritis, you might have a hard time turning that <laughs> yeah. thing. But I think they got to <laughs> stop building up for guys with arthritis, right? But that's, like that's part. Like Porsche doesn't build, even though guys with arthritis buy Porsches. Yeah, they're not. They're not. It's in, not no, front no, of mind. I don't right. have arthritis. <laughs> And like I rock climb and do yeah. pull ups and things, and yeah, even yeah. I'm like the crimping force to turn this yeah. is quite high. Yeah, yeah. The, the spring load on is too much. It I, is. A, I like is it. it a I, weighty I, knob? I like that knob. Yeah, yeah. I have strong hands. Oh, yeah. You're like bending, yeah, tearing card decks. That's right. And, that's right. And that's right. Shit. So, yeah, yeah. so they're building it for people that tear cards now. Yes. Of arthritis. Finally, right. they know their target audience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the the Z06, you've driven it. Yes, I, I spent so two days great. on a track with it. So I did two with Road and Track Performance yeah. Car of the Year, right. and that was like Z07 downforce kit, carbon wheels, Same. sticky That's tires. That's the one I drove. So the one we have now is like the street spec. Oh, so it doesn't have the stupid wing. Non-Z07, yeah. uh, steel, uh, forged wheels. That wing is so bad on yeah. the Z07. PS4S, not, oh. not Cup 2s. Oh. How is it on those? Nose lift. The old, oh, and ooh. luxury interior, three LZ, yeah. um, one hundred forty-seven. I, I, I love bucks. American car companies. I fucking hate the nomenclature. <laughs> oh, mine is a two ZZ. I was a three I LZ. I was just with Ford, and they're like, "Oh no, you can get that tailgate if you get the XLT with the four hundred six A package." I'm like, "The what? Shut up, like, stop!" Nobody knows four hundred six A. Nobody knows what this means. <laughs> nobody knows what any of it means. But I don't think I put a single you know, picture of it up yet, Zach. But Sorry, it's, but it, it's, um, so this is like, let's call this the the GT three touring. Spec yeah, yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. This yeah. is the one. Unless, I mean, if you're a track rat, great. Okay, fine. Get all that other shit. Yeah. If you're not, yeah. the ride, the handling, this one has optional carbon brakes. The regular ass wheels are fine. The yeah. regular yeah, yeah, ass yeah, yeah. PS4Ss are great. If you yeah. get stuck in the rain, you're great. Right. It's enough for Canyon. I, I was limited on the mountain today by my ability to drive, right. not by That's good. Yeah. not by the car. Right. If you would have had a stupid wing, you would have gone. Yeah, Cup yeah. twos wouldn't have made me go any quicker. So you know. with the C7 uh, Z06, I remember we had like the it was like no options. They actually made like a no option manual. I remember, yeah. I remember it was red. It was ninety grand. Yeah. And the fuel pump went out. But be- oh no, the <laughs> water pump. But before that happened. I was like, this is the one to get. Like, this is just rad because it's just, it looks like a 
Corvette, but it's got the Z06 engine. Sure. And that was so good. So I imagine this is probably similar. Well, this one is sort of like a luxury touring spec. It uh -huh. had the nice, the nicer leather this and the three ZLT. Forty-seven thousand dollars. So it was, it was um, one, one, four, seven. one four seven. One four seven. Yeah. yeah. But the three Numbers don't even mean like anything anymore. <laughs> well, to your point, I, I was saying uh, yesterday, it'd be fun to drive a base Z06 because you get the engine, you get all the yeah. good hardware. Yeah. And if you want a track car or something, that's a good place to start. Or if you don't want their imitation of luxury and, and with the Z yeah right. yeah <laughs> but with, with the Z07 like if you go to the track setup for the suspension it, it because I think the Corvette C8 rides incredibly well it yes. does until you put the Z07 into track right. and then it's and then it's brutal. horrible yeah, yeah it's yeah. horrible and, yeah. and so that was what we experienced with the the P Cody car which right. had you know the the the, the we're timing you alignment yes you yeah, know, yeah which yeah. turned in like holy oh, shit yeah. you know? oh yeah like I said I spent a day on a, two days on a racetrack with with the Z07 in track mode unreal phenomenal unreal yeah, yeah but yeah, you yeah. don't want that on the road you, like I w I went up against you know that guy I'm blanking on his last name now uh, Amir he's the he's a time attack uh, national champion he's a is an NSX that's like his NSX is so nuts that I asked Porsche for a GT3 RS and they were like not against that car <laughs> <laughs> old and, NSX or new current NSX oh so Jen you're Jen it's an old one yeah oh, okay. but it's a time attack uh, uh, oh yeah, look at that yeah, thing yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, that's... Benta 2 sorry Amir Amir um, Benta 2 K yeah. swapped NSX yeah. 700 horsepower yeah. 2150 so, I bet that drives awesome so it was broken uh, uh, naturally bummer. So he, but he made a he made a mini version of it which is a Lotus mm. um, and it's I think it's a it's a K20 Lotus and it's a that's it's rad Dude, it it was a um, I'm gonna play. It was an Elise that he bolted a hard top to, so it looks okay. like it looks like an Exige. It looks like an Exige, but it's not. And um, anyway, and and like I'm an okay driver. This this guy's a nat literally the national time attack champion, and I was like 1.5 seconds behind him. And I was I the day before when I was practicing, it was a different track. That's close oh. enough to make you feel good, but in the actual time attack competition, you're like eighth. Yep. Oh, definitely. <laughs> you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I mean, look, he had a he had a, he had a sub two thousand pound car. Yeah, I mean, it was, yeah. yeah. yeah it was a, but I was, I'm saying what I'm saying is the Z07 fucking rocks. Look, his Lotus looks pretty good. That's too. the one. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's yeah. not bad. That's yeah, it's that's right. really cool. No, the Z07 uh, Aero Kit Z06 is incredible. Yeah. If yeah. you want, if you want a factory warranted track day car, oh, that's, that's killer. It's great. And you're right. The turn in is just stupid. It's insane. Yeah. I can't believe the turn in. But yeah, yeah, yeah. On the street, it was less enjoyable than the one we have here. Mm -hmm. The one we have here has a ride that you can use as a daily driver, you know, all the time. It's easy and automatic. It's got, it's comfortable <laughs> enough. You know, you, you still take the roof off, of course. And on the mountain, it is stupidly fast. And, you know, the star of the show is that engine, which is unbelievable. And you don't need all the other crazy shit to enjoy the totally. car. Yeah. And I mean, you're you're getting it. It it's the most exotic feeling American car I've ever driven by a lot. So feeling is a great word because I remember a couple of years ago when we were doing I can't remember what it was. It was probably the last best driver's car. But we had C8, we had Uricon, and we had 488. Yeah. And we're just jumping back and forth. You know, you do these. You jump back and forth between cars. If you weren't staring at the steering wheel, just by the way it feels going down the road, you're like, am I in the Ferrari or the Corvette? Am yeah. I in the Lambo or the Ferrari? You know what I mean? Like, there's just a real similar feel. The difference is the Corvette rides 10 times better than both of them. It does. Yeah, yeah the Magna Ride 4 is brilliant. Yeah, and if you, you don't know. get the Z07, it rides softer, which yeah. on the street is it's better. better. It's totally yeah, better. It yeah. is better. I think it's sad to me that people, like, just, like, are so Porsche crazy. And I get it. Porsches are rad, but, like... Dude, the C8 is a great, great car. It is, and, you know. and money for money, what you're getting? Yeah. What are you getting in 911 terms for 115? You're getting a loaded. A, a, you're getting a, ba a Carrera a, a T, base, and maybe a maybe T if an you're S. Lucky. Yeah, I yeah. think the green you're, Carrera T we tested was in the 140. So basically, well, same it had price. a bunch of shit. Right? No, no, yeah. I'm saying yeah. so. It's it's like yeah. this Z06 yeah. or that Carrera T with yeah, a bunch yeah. of options. And we, yeah. you know, we did, we did a thing. I'm still mad at him, but Connor Golden used to work for us. Uh, <laughs> we we did. Uh, it was like. Cayman GTS versus mm -hmm. uh, C8, and they were the same price. They're we both, did that they're, too. They're both like ninety. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, Corvette, hundred percent. Like, I, I love, I love. No, nothing bad. I don't have a bad thing to say about the Cayman. It's just the Corvette for that money is a, just a much more engine, much more fun ultimately, and the top comes off and blah blah. And then he's such a Porsche homer that he like he said he he made he, he wrote it so he gave the win to the Porsche, and he was like. 
Well, he had the weaseliest line of all time. He's like, "This is this is a a tactical win, not a something." It was it was, you know how Porsche guys I, can be. I, yeah, it was, with, it was when great. we did the same thing. Yeah, I preferred the Cayman GTS to the base Corvette. Huh? Okay. Uh, it's, it's nothing wrong with the Corvette. These are not. Yeah. It's not a bad car. And again, it was like uh, it's uh, it was incremental. Like, yeah, yeah. The Corvette was better at certain things. I, I like the Cayman a little better for other things. Whatever, but. With the Z06, that engine oh, yeah. is that doesn't that I mean the revs, the 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 frequency that it operates yeah. at. Yeah. The I mean, when we were doing the drive-by fucking shots on the mountain yesterday, dude, that sounds like a speciale coming up the road. That's mm-hmm. what they benchmarked. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it sounds like that. Yeah. yeah. They benchmarked a speciale. I yeah. mean, imagine successfully reversing a speciale yeah. from to 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 nothing and then building a better one. That really highlights the importance of engine though because yes. alt- I mean, I think if you put on a blindfold and covered your ears and you w- went in the CO6, sorry, the C8 we were in before and then you also jumped in this they probably feel pretty close. In fact, it's in really fact, because the six two is torquier, I think like zero to sixty, the the C H actually quicker. It than is. Yeah, Z06. yeah, it might be. It's it might, it might be. Yeah. But like, but ride, even but if the Z six made a hundred less horsepower than it makes, yeah. it would still be delightful. Yeah, it's, it's an exotic sound. It's yeah. not something we hear all no, the time. No, it's an exotic car. Yeah. But I was making this point earlier today, like the, the you know, the, and I'll, I know you heard me say this, but like, you know, the, the Z06 with that engine, it's the most powerful, naturally aspirated V8 of all time. No one's ever put a production engine V8 out that makes more power without turbos. And the Lucid has three motors on it that makes 670 yeah, horsepower. That's crazy, man. It's, <laughs> it's just that's like, crazy, man. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's just like, it's just funny. This is where we are. It was funny that yeah. they were parked next to each other. I was like, they're both 670, but that has three of them. <laughs> yeah, like, at a, which it's, it's just at a certain point, which is what makes me so happy about the Hyundai, mm. is that, okay, it's not the fastest EV, but, like, real world, what's the difference between a Plaid, a Taycan, and a Sapphire? Zero. Like, yeah, not yeah. much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. They're, now it's like, okay, let's pivot yeah. and see if we can, like, find a way to crank up the engagement, God, mm, which I, I love. I'm dying to drive that car. Zach just, drove it for yeah. the first time today. What, what did you think? Was so I lying? impressed. No, no, no. You were 100% accurate. Can I mean, I yesterday, splash, yep. yesterday, yeah, yesterday I got in the car and I started testing the sounds and the revs, and I started laughing. And because of how accurate it is with your foot. But then the 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 gears is so helpful. Being yeah. able to shift, I know it's fake, but it does a great job of, it does a great impression of gears. Like there's the over rev and it lurches forward when you downshift, but it helped me set the speed going up or down the hill, which is really awesome. Yeah. Mm. But then handling wise, I mean, it's, it's on par with like a, a recent E-Class AMG or something like that. I mean, it feels heavy, but the damping's good. And the suspension's not too stiff. I did bottom out like once, and then you kind of feel the top heavy weight. I think it sits pretty low. I don't think it, it has a ton of travel. It I, does I, a good I, job. I, I hit the bump stops coming coming down the corkscrew every single lap. Oh, that I makes the tons stops. of sense. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's okay though. That's I a also weird was thing. going a little bit Zanardi line, but you know, oh, yeah. not my car. <laughs> but, but like, but steering AMC, feel and, car. and rack speed and accuracy, and then there, you know that there's like so much magic happening between all of the motors and stuff but it doesn't intrude you're mm-hmm. just you're just getting around the corner like you said with the lucid it's just helping you get around so fast i was really impressed by it yeah yeah. yeah, and after a couple minutes, you go. I know this is not real, but I don't give a shit because it's doing exactly the thing that I need it to be doing. Yeah. 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 On the way up, I had the thought of like uh, fun and excitement are not always the same thing. Like I was having fun, but then I drove Thad's car and I drove that 2002. Those were more. Uh, those were more fun, but not as exciting right. because they had more noise, and I felt like that sort of mechanical connection was there. Whereas the Hyundai was very exciting because I was going so fast, but it was so easy in one pedal drive or whatever, but it just wasn't quite as fun. Well, but I don't, for think, an electric I don't car, think the Hyundai, yeah, we got to calibrate it against EVs. I, we I can't know it calibrate is. it against S54 swapped E36s. No, but it's, you know? it is definitely the funnest EV if I'm not just trying to go as fast as possible. Right. Like mm-hmm. it, it, I think it handles and drives it's, I was just, as you good know, as a, the Lucid, if I can remember. The the inside baseball stuff, like, you know, we, we were speaking about this, but like when the GT4 RS came out, mm-hmm. every single review, glowing, second coming of Jesus himself, this is the car. When I talk to you, you're like, yeah, it's kind of loud. 
You know, like off, off, like you know, and everyone else is like, eh, something. I haven't heard a bad anything about the yeah, Hyundai. Yeah, yeah. I just haven't. No one said, yeah, but you know, no, what I it's mean? rad. Yeah, so I'm it's excited. Rad. I'm dying the, to Here's drive the it. bad thing about it, which I discovered, Zach discovered, Camisa discovered, everyone discovered. There's because you can do anything. Yeah, they let you do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because of that, it's fucking confusing. There's a lot. There's so much you can do, right, and it, there's right. menus within menus. And so, fortunately, there's those two hard buttons. So for most drivers, you got your normal mode, you got your sport one, your sport two. They're pre you preset, and then you never have to do deal with that shit again. But like, there's just too many menus. Yeah, yeah. And, and look, that's that's you know, people get into that with like BMWs and Cadillacs, where it's like I have three suspensions, three steering, three brakes. Braking parameters, three transmissions, like I don't fucking. Well, this has all those, and I wanted to ask you, Matt, because you know you can have the end buttons, which get you into those different settings, but then it also has eco, normal, and Mm -hmm. sport. It seemed like you had to go into sport mode before hitting the end button to activate that correctly. But I only drove it for a few hours, so maybe I'm wrong. I don't remember. That might be true. I, I don't remember. Honestly, I don't. Because I don't. Because you I, also said to me, you right, also I said, to, "Hey, I, I, how do I get out of manual shift and back into auto?" I couldn't figure that out. Which it occurred to me, because I was mostly driving on the track, I would just have it in manual, and then I'd come into the pits, park it, turn it off, and walk away. I never put it back right, in auto. Right, so I right. Because like, no. it wasn't like you know, like BMW, you hold up one paddle and it goes, sure. "Oh, you want to go back to D?" Right. But that didn't work in this. You had to like do it, I think, with the drive mode menu. Uh, and then I tried to, I wanted to test the whole drifty thing in, in a uh, totally closed course, like you know, parking lot. And I had, I had it in Sport Plus and the thing, and then the menu pops up and says, you haven't met the parameters. You need this, this, this. And then I got oh, four annoying. of them, and it's yeah. like, ah, ah, you're missing one, but I'm not going to tell you where it is. <laughs> yeah, and part, part of that is, you know, look, like the Ionic 5, while it's a nice EV, it's not like a true software-defined vehicle, so there's yeah. a lot of weird hard-coded stuff. And, so, you know, they have the eco mode, which, why would you have an eco mode in an end car? It's, you, you, you know, you feel the software. I understand the out. use of it. You're low on charge and whatever, yeah. fine. No, but, but what I'm saying, they, they can't make like systematic changes right, quickly. They, right, they right. got a bunch of legacy because that, that's still using parts found in other Kias. And, and what that. Hyundai has told me, or under Hyundai's, both both at the launch and since, because I've been they've been texting me throughout this loan, yeah. is like we're we're listening to everything you're saying, and this car is updatable over the air, and we're going to try oh, okay. and simplify yeah. menus, and yeah. we're going to try and do this, and we're going to try and do that. So, and that's yeah. and that's again, that's Which is good. The, that's the great thing about software defined vehicles, and yeah, I, yeah. this is a term that uh, I'm, I'm using. No one knows what I'm talking about, but like you can do that. Yeah, you know, it's not like you buy it. It's like, well, that part sucks like that forever. Like, like Rivian, you know, they have they've added tons of functionality. You know, since since the car was new, there's a pet mode, there's a car wash mode, but you're like you were previously digging through menus and you know it was great it had all this functionality but it was like where pet modes under under climate but like this is on a boom and car wash mode was somewhere else they put a new menu in when you go into park to drop down every one of those modes is just in a menu oh, that's good yeah and it's like yeah. you can do that and, and yeah you, you, gotta give, you gotta give tesla credit for doing that first yeah you, so i mean doing. yeah hey yeah. i'll give them i'll give them all the credit in the world yeah, yeah. fine okay yeah. they can yeah. have that one yeah and like I the mean, hyundai with the adjustability like i think m did that maybe did they do it first they initialize all that stuff with like now you can adjust your transmission I mean, shift m and amg you know, were kind yeah. of yeah. Neck and neck. M, yeah. m m probably had more first and then amg caught up I mean, yeah. remember amg didn't turn left or right for a long time. They sh- and, and they didn't shift very well. <laughs> yeah, they, all, they had five-speed five autos speed. for a real I mean, long time. So I mean, many great cars were just shot CLK in the leg CLK Black five Series. Five yeah. It's still so good, even with the bad transmission, but yeah. it is let down. You have to, like, shift two seconds before you want Bro, the Bro, the fucking SLR. Like, come on. Yeah. Four hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, the fuck out of here. But like, <laughs> oh, that puts the ZF eight speed in perspective. Like, yeah. What are you complaining about? Right, like, what am ZF eight speed works. Right? Oh, it shifts up really Maybe. fast. It does shift. I wonder, I wonder really if Rentex got a gearbox upgrade for that SLR. That I, could be. I, yeah, hundred percent. Something. So uh, Sergio, who we're hanging out mm-hmm. with, you know, he got a CLK black, and he got the software update for the transmission, mm-hmm. and he's like, it's ten times better. So now it's just a normal bad automatic. <laughs> but you know, hey, you know, I'm actually going to drive it on Sunday. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah CLK. Blacks are all right. They're cool. Oh my god! Great, I mean, little, good that, little car. That's talking about turn in. That's one of the best front end, like fuels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, it's so good. Yeah, just go DTM on shit, and you're oh, pretty much yeah. you're pretty much there. You're all right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yes. 
My yeah. homie Ben had a CLK fifty five, which is a which is the, mm. the earlier version of that, which is somehow Damn. even wonkier. <laughs> this was, I believe, wow, one hundred seventy six. Oh, that's low miles. I believe this is the uh, first black. Se- well, I know it was the, it was first, the there, first black. No, series. there was there's a there's a uh, CLK or SLK SLK black, but it was it yeah. was it was not. It, it was Europe only, I think. Something right? like that. But this yeah. is the one Tobias Moore, who became CEO of mm-hmm. AMG. This was his first project at AMG, I believe. Oh, wow. Was the SLK and black before the CLK black? I think there was, yes. Mm. I, I th- I'm almost positive. So what year is The it SLK black is pretty cool looking. Yeah. It probably what, didn't. I, I want to say, I, yeah, because I always I would always say this is the first black series and then like, the entire internet's like, no, no. And it's like, okay. It was, it was at the same time for sure. Like, I think it was like a year before. Yeah. Like this was like a 2008 or nine or something. What do we have the SLK? Not the SL, the SLK. SLK 55, yeah, so black, 2006. How about yeah, that? Yeah, and I think the CLK was, was 2008. I saw an SLK 55 the other day. I haven't seen one of them in forever. Cool little car. Doesn't drive great, but looks good. The, Sounds remember good. the one? It wasn't a black series, but it was just, I think it was just the SLK. Yeah, 55. The, yeah, because that, yeah. that was the twin turbo engine with the turbos taken off. So it was an yes. NAV8. Yeah, it was neat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was that was a great car. I drove it on one of those MPG track yeah. days. The white and, one. Yeah, the white one. Yeah. And it didn't drive very well, but it sounded awesome. <laughs> yeah. I remember I wanted to launch of that with uh, a real class with Kamisa, who was my driving partner, and uh, Jeff Day was following us oh, wow. in SLS road and yeah. was keeping up. It was like yeah. me and Camisa driving like maniacs through like Ben Lohman and Jeff. And then at every stoplight, uh, Jeff was blasting like, I don't know, some disco bullshit. So Jason and Jeff are standing on the seats like disco dancing with like guys holding chainsaws like, we're going to kill you. It's fucking <laughs> crazy. It was amazing. Yeah. Um, what a car though. What a car. What, uh, you drive anything else uh, noteworthy recently? Well, you know, I just wanted to say this because it's so preposterous. I drove the new uh, refreshed Raptor R. Which has oh, been on really? sale for two months, but the embargo is May twenty third, so I can't talk about it. Oh, but okay. I said to Ford, I said, "Hey Ford, um, that's kind of weird that the cars all because everyone on Instagram is like, yeah, I bought mine two months ago. <laughs> like, why can't you talk about it?' So there's production units being sold. So, oh, there have been sold an embargo, and I and and uh, so they were like, "Oh, it's our new strategy." <laughs> I was like, that's, "That's a stupid strategy. Super weird. Like, it means yeah." They're like, "Well, we want when people read your reviews to be able to go to the dealer and then drive it." I'm like, uh-huh. "Yeah, but they but already. <laughs> what? What? It doesn't okay. make any sense." All right. Well, there's a yeah. photo of it in the air. Um, yeah. So wait, uh, what's what? Today's the oh, today's seventeenth. Oh, so this yeah, won't be up, I, I yeah, can't this won't even. be up in time. Uh, look, uh, they added twenty horsepower and, oh, okay. and some so other there stuff. You go. Um, I can't. What <laughs> will it be like? It's yeah. going to be a totally different. Say, it's a crossover. Now. I will say that the previous the the live valve shock on the previous one just had a valve for compression, didn't have a separate channel for rebound. I see. Now it has a separate channel for rebound. Game changer. I mean, it could be. I couldn't Fuck tell you. Game I'll, I'll tell you off the air. I'll okay. tell you off the air. Uh, um, well, yeah. let's go to the Patreon. I'm sure yeah, there is a light smattering of questions from the Patreon. Of course, if you want to ask questions, if you want to get the live stream, if you want to get the show early, if you want to get special offers and uh, early access to things like our uh, notice watch drops and other merch, patreon.com slash the smoking tire podcast. And of course, being the merch, the merch store is open at the smoking tire shop.com or at the smoking tire.com. Just click on that merch tab. Let's see. What those patrons have to say. Uh, Hunter Sands says, I went to Miami GP and I feel pretty strongly that the 992 GT3 Cup cars sound better than the F1 cars, which is unfortunate. Uh, Will the rules ever allow for them to make the cars sound good again? Look, uh, the, the the Kabuki theater of we're doing this for the environment uh, when they're flying it's a little silly when they're <laughs> flying and on 747s and shipping on giant cargo tugs. Like, yeah, look, Formula One, if I was in charge, it would just be everyone gets a seven liter V12. That's the formula. <laughs> Whoever's fastest wins. Like, yeah. You know, I I agree that is a little silly. I get, okay, we're using, you know, you want to use sustainable fuel? Fine. Sure. You want to, you know, you want to do, you want to use curves and, and, uh, go, and a go curves mild nuts. hybrid technology? Like, fine. But, uh, but yeah, making the cars sound good should be a priority. And V12s are red, or V10s yeah. are red. Put, yeah, put I, I agree. Yeah. And uh, cup cars, they do sound good. You know what sounds even better is the um, 
the GT3 R. That, yeah, that like Ren Sport anniversary thing. Well, or the that, yeah, car. that. But the that the, the actual race car that's based on. Yeah, so yeah. it's the 4.2 liter. I'm telling you that 0.2. I was. That <laughs> makes all the difference in the world. Oh baby! I was just at the Porsche Experience Center and I I met up with uh, Eric down there, there yeah, who's yeah, in charge yeah, of, the, of the uh, yeah. of the shop there. Love Eric. Yeah. And he showed me a uh, torn down 4.2. Oh, cool. That they were servicing. But oh, you know what else I learned while I was down there? It was so interesting. They had. A uh, an RSR engine that was being in for ser- in, it was in for service from I don't know seven eight years ago mm-hmm. right and they showed it to me on the stand the alternator was really little and had a McLaren logo on it okay McLaren made Porsche's racing alternators for like a long time apparently during endurance racing the alternator is the most likely sure. thing to fail yeah, yeah it's always an electrical oh, wow. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah and so they were literally getting alternators from McLaren for like the longest time I, I it was mean. the same unit that was on the um the 6 series cars and the P1 yeah, yeah they would yeah. just put them on the Porsche race cars huh. now Porsche has Apparently, according to Eric, they have their own alternator sure. that is now so dependable they don't they put it on the transmission. They don't even put it somewhere accessible during the race. Well, uh, on the on the on the GT3 R, all the accessories, pump, water pump, whatever, mm-hmm. alternator, it's all in front of the transmission. Mm-hmm. So they're trying to get as much weight off the back, put it in the middle. Uh, right. Yeah. 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 So it's pretty that's a, it's a, I got to drive that. That's a neat car. They said it's in like, the current gen cars they could change an engine faster than they could change an alternator. Yeah, yeah. No, it's true because yeah. we, uh, the engine has nothing connected to it. Yeah, it just yeah. bolts into the transmission. Yeah. So very yeah. interesting stuff. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Like Kyle thing. says uh, Johnny posted a preview of a review of the Prius Prime, saying PHEVs are the worst of both worlds in terms of EV and gas. Totally true. Go, Johnny. Uh, I I I disagree. Um, but. What uh, what it? Where does your basis of that? You just get a shitty EV that trains you to use EVs in the worst way possible. Always got to charge it every single day, hundred percent, and then you know the battery drains out. So you're you're it's like your phone. You're just, that's why you have to get a new phone every nine months. Your battery's just constantly topped off, constantly drained. Um, and then when your two point four liter, or sorry, two liter Atkinson cycle engine kicks on, and you have a CVT transmission, it's the worst gasoline experience possible. Also, okay. So, so you're, what you're talking about. Is is the experience the driving versus, experience the driving experience yeah. which i understand that perspective but i think for your average commuter right just a car not an enthusiast just mm-hmm. a car yeah you know where you're driving 10 or 12 miles to work and back you know but an ev if you're only driving 10 or 12 miles to work and back then if you have like i don't know 250 mile range that'll last you a long time and you have a great ev the whole time sure but it, you don't have the flexibility of being able to go anywhere at any time that's any distance yeah but you kind of do everything that was on the tesla network it all it all works ev but electrify america who i used to despise has turned a corner they all kind of work well now it is. It can be a more stressful experience. Can and be. if you can't, if you don't have reliable charging at home, if you well, live in okay, no, I, I agree with you. That's that's an issue. I totally agree. I totally agree. Um, if you can charge at home, yeah, I agree with you. One hundred percent. An EV is the way to go. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. At least have one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Fair, yeah. Fair enough. If you can charge at home, there's the convenience of an EV is unmatched yeah. by, a, by a hybrid. And that's that's all I meant. I, yeah, I, yeah. Was, I was like I was like driving the Prius around the Prime, and I'm like, this is a great car as an EV. But when that battery dies after 39 miles, yeah. then this horrible coarse engine. Uh, God ooh, damn it. Ah, wah, wah, wah. You have paper towels. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll keep going. Okay. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll fight with Zach. Hey, Zach. <laughs> hey, Johnny. Go fuck um, yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, like, you know, the, the course, just, uh, you know, no sound insulation, engine through a CVT kicks on, and now I'm back in a miserable Prius. And uh, it just sucks. Compared, if they just took that out and put a battery where the engine, gas tank, and transmission were, it'd be a much nicer car. That's true. I mean, and the experience of the hybrid setup does matter because, like, uh, uh, my fiance bought a Rav Four hybrid, so mm-hmm. kind of, let's call that. Boy, those uh, ain't cheap. <laughs> they're they're not cheap, but they're they're very popular for a very, reason. Very popular. But then, yeah. when Matt and I went to Rhode Island, we rented a Grand Cherokee Four XE. Uh-huh. So Oof. those had very different experiences in terms of when the engine kicks on. How the well, Jeep that's felt like eighteen miles in the Jeep, right? That's just it's sooner, but it also it, it wasn't it, it, feels it wasn't rougher. charged when we got it, so we were running on like true hybrid the whole time. Yeah, and that's the other thing is that you know uh, because you have an electrical 
uh, powertrain and a gas powertrain, when the battery is dead, it's less efficient than just a gas car would be by itself. Um, yeah, I just, oh, I just of the extra weight. Yeah, because of the extra weight, and and uh, you know, also a lot of times, it, depending on if you remember to put it in the right mode, you know, you might be trying to charge the battery rather than run the hybrid system, and and you know when. You have a 5,000-pound vehicle like the Grand Cherokee uh, uh, 4XE, and the battery runs out, and that engine kicks on cold. The amount of knocks being tossed onto a cold catalytic converter is, like, horrific. It's just, you know, it's just it's, – it's, suddenly you have a car going 80 miles an hour. It has to keep moving. So you have a cold catalyst. has to heat up. So – all the NOx is coming out the tailpipes. It's it's greenwashing. It's a way for Stellantis, who doesn't have a modern EV strategy right now. I mean, they're going to get one well, to okay. say, hey, well, if you remember to plug it in, you can go 18 miles. And it so gets, at, at the higher end, right, like I, I talk about this car all the time, but my dad got a Cayenne hybrid. Uh-huh. It gets uh, 40-something miles on electricity, which mm-hmm. is what he drives most of the time. Sure. Until he has to go to a couple specific places, which are 100-something miles round trip. The the Cayenne Hybrid's, you know, twin-turbo V6 is a totally decent engine. It's, it's not yeah. exciting. It's, it's, it's an Audi motor. It's, it's, it's not yeah, exciting. Yeah. It's great. But it's not like a piece of shit. No. And so he, you know, regularly tells me that he goes two months or three months yeah. between fill-ups in his car. Sure. Whereas okay. before... You know, he came out of a Cayenne Turbo, which got like 15 miles a gallon, and he was filling up once a week. Yeah. So, but I would just say, imagine never filling up. I I agree with you. Yeah. I don't think I don't think he is was ready for a full EV. Sure. I think maybe maybe now with his experience of a hybrid, his next car maybe could be a full EV. And, and look, it's 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 a bridge, like like you know the the Chevy Volt, right? So when that came Loved out, it. 2011. Uh, it went 40 miles yep. on a charge, and then little mm-hmm. engine kicked mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Prius Prime 2024, so that's 13 years later. Yeah, goes 40 miles on a charge. Like, you know what I mean? Like, totally agree. It's just it's it's a decade ago. Oh boy, it's There's a decade n- ago. See, that was me, but with a glass. <laughs> <laughs> see, well, this, this you're not better than me. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, <laughs> smash. Um, no, yeah, you're yeah. totally right. Yeah, I, yeah. My, when I dro- I drove the Prius in Miami, and I was like, this is great. Actually, yeah, but it's not much different from the Volt I had. Exactly, and, and yes. everyone's talking about how great this Prius was. Yeah, and where was all these fucking people when I was talking Dude, about my true. Volt? But <laughs> I, I, quick thing: the Volt battery, according to quick googling, weighed nine hundred and forty-seven pounds. Okay, the sure. Prius uh, battery now, the Prius Prime battery weighs two ninety. Oh, well, so that is that is an battery improvement. density. Th- sure, to- to- yes, to- good progress. And that'll that'll keep happening. Yeah, um, that is progress. I yeah. I, I was I, car driver. Point Zach. Po- yeah, no, hey, but car Point driver. Toyota. Point car driver say, has um, pretty good archives. And I was trying to find. I remember this very well. It's just before I got in the industry. It's like 2004. I opened up my monthly car and driver. There's an editorial from Chuba, you know, like uh, hybrids are stupid. Right, then turn the page. Brock Yates, pink economy liberals are forcing hybrids down your throat. (laughs) Turn the page. Pat Bedard, some bizarre scientific formula that proves a Prius is worse than an atomic bomb for the environment. And and so this the, that same mentality twenty years later is now like fuck EVs hybrids everyone's got to have a hybrid so it's it's a, a little bit of goalpost moving I don't think it's fuck EVs what I think is what I mean if people are not prepared for the infrastructure if the infrastructure is not there for them I, I get it yeah electrification the hybridization oh yeah is better than nothing. And even if you're if your average commute or whatever is 40, 50 miles a day, you can improve your experience with a car if it's just a regular ass car. Yeah. By going hybrid. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, and I just say, but when you go from hybrid to EV, it's an even better experience. It is assuming the external conditions yeah. meet your needs. A- agreed. And I just the driving think that's, experience is better for yeah. sure. And I just think that's changing yeah, fast. Yeah. And and it, but again, it's just it's just this. I've just noticed this mentality. When you remember when the Volt came out, uh, you know, I remember like w- w- we named it Car of the Year, and we were getting phone called in death threats oh, because man. Rush Limbaugh was like those communists at Motor Trend, and I'd love a death threat from Rush Limbaugh. Uh, God, well, it was, his, it was his, it was his, it was his <laughs> listeners. But then I remember like Neil Cavuto on Fox News like was interviewing. They had a Volt owner. A guy bought a Volt, and he's like. 
Can you fit in the car? We found one. Can you <laughs> and, fit in the and car? And the guy's like, yeah, I fit fine. And he's like, but doesn't it like, isn't it horrible? He's like, well, you know, I drive 10 miles to work and then I drive 10 miles back and then I plug it in when I get home. Yeah. Yeah, but isn't it like he was just so unprepared for the reality. Dude, when I, uh, while admitting that I enjoyed my time with a Ford Raptor most of the time. They're while, fun. While admitting that, <laughs> yeah. I also have to say, and I've said it before, that my life Got better when I got rid of it and got a fucking Volt. <laughs> yeah, Volt. I mean, like Leto. Do you remember Leto put like 100,000 miles, miles on his Volt? miles on his Volt. Yeah. Like, yeah. He, he was said something like, I can't remember. He put like eight gallons in it over 100,000 miles or Dude, something. Dude, I, I did. It, it wasn't that, but I averaged over 200 miles a gallon over yeah. my three-year lease yeah, on my Volt. which is ridiculous. The engine would turn on Just to, to keep to the cycle gas clean. the fluid. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, it was crazy. Yeah. And it, I, anyway, it was Love. like, do, do you know Sean Holman? A truck show think, podcast. He's the editor, and he's a great guy. Editor in chief of Four Wheeler. He bought a Nissan Aria because he has a, he has a Jeep three ninety two, and he was like, "I do five trips a day. It's mostly like dropping my daughter off somewhere. I don't want the Jeep isn't even cold or even warmed up by the time I get home, and it's like nine miles a gallon." He got a Nissan Aria, and people are like, "You commie sellout, you!" Whore. And he's like, "I'm just driving around the neighborhood. I yeah. do five miles." And yeah, like, people are crazy. Yeah. Uh, here's one from Chris Nolke. Uh, Rob Ferretti recently made a video claiming Aston Martin was the worst expectation versus reality of modern sports cars. As someone who dreams of a uh, DB or Vantage in retirement as a daily, do you agree? Uh, oh, um, well, expect. <laughs> it, I suppose it depends on what your expectations are. Yeah. I mean, expect an Aston Martin. There, you know, it's, I don't know. Um, I mean, worst expectation like it's not a 911, versus like, reality. If you buy a Vantage and think you're getting a 911, you're going to be wrong. But yeah. I would say a Vantage has like way more power, uh, makes much better noises than any 911 ever, mm -hmm. and looks fucking hot, especially the yeah. new one. And even and even the old Vantage, I mean, the, the kind of 2008-9, yeah, I mean, the interior of those I thought was beautiful. Yeah, a little go, hard go. to read the buttons, but but before the buttons got really crazy. But yeah. it was that beautiful kind of like single waterfall metal carbon the, thing. Stunning inside and out, great sounds. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I don't know if I if I buy into that. I think it depends on what you expect yeah. the car to I, be. I would say the, the Dark Horse, <laughs> the Mustang Dark Horse. Oh, man, that's up there. I do not like that I'm car. I'm not a big fan of it. Yeah. yeah it's it's The new Mustang is surprised. Like, the... It, feels like, enormous, doesn't it? It feels big, but also, like you were saying, the Vantage has no steering feel. Like, there's no way that the Mustang has more steering feel. In the, like, that, to me, was the deadest of That's all. True. It's pretty, pretty digital. Yeah. It's very digital. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. like, we did a thing where we, we hit. Digital and the Dark Horse is darty combined with it being digital. Yeah. So it's, it's tram it's, lines, and then you don't feel it. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, we, we did a video with that and uh, the, I, you know, Challenger, very, very, very last edition. For real, this time we mean it, you know. <laughs> And like, yeah, my saying was yeah. was like, yes, the the numbers it generated were better. It stopped better. It turned better. I take that Challenger ten times before the Mustang. It, it was just mm. character dripping out of it. You know, like hood shaking. And like I don't think, Rob, if I had to guess, and I haven't talked to Rob Freddy about this, I'm guessing he's not driven a D, driven a DB12. If your recent, if your last Aston Martin experience was a DB11, especially a mm. first gen one. Yeah. I could see how you could come to that conclusion. Yeah. But um, if you've driven, I mean, a DB12 isn't, it's not a 911. No. It's not a Ferrari. But compared to a Bentley, it's a legit competitor. Yeah. 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 I, I, I don't, I, like I said, for me, it would be dark horse. It's a fast luxury car, not necessarily like a super, a sporty supercar. Yeah. It's a and touring then, car. And then uh, I, I still haven't driven the AMG version. And I don't know if this really counts as a sports car, but the, the new SL is like, one of the most disappointing anythings I've ever driven. They're yeah. weird. They're weird, and and there's four cylinder versions all we over the street. We drove the four cylinder <laughs> version. <laughs> what you drive that? this yet? No. Sounds like a WRC car, dude. <laughs> it's weird, it, dude. What? It's got the vibratious yeah. powertrain. <laughs> it's talking about cold start. It kicks on, and the mirrors shake. It's dude, like, oh. imagine a hundred twenty thousand dollar GT car with an Evo eight engine in it. That's I mean, what it feels okay. like. Okay, well, now you're selling it. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, no, it's so vibrating. I drove the V eight, and I'm like, I just don't get this car. It's weird. And it was like yeah. five thousand pounds or forty hundred pounds, like yeah. it's just like the most aggressive rear steer. Yeah, it's and got that's like why cyber truck rear steer and yeah. sports car. That's why. I was oh, glad you drove that the, the cyber truck. Finally, didn't, didn't yeah, it was steer. trash. You didn't like it. 
There's a couple. I put a video. Put a video up today that's called Eight Things I Don't Like About Cyber <laughs> Truck. Uh, it's number one out of ten on our last list. But uh, okay, the um, there are there were a couple redeeming qualities of the Cyber Truck. Okay, yes. Whoop, <laughs> shit. Um, <laughs> I don't trust Tesla to build a, a reliable steer by wire system. That's very, it's a very valid point. But I did see the appeal of the idea. Okay, uh, I found it pleasant to use. Yeah, uh, especially for something that big. Uh, what was the I th- I one other gonna, thing? I think I there's going to be. I think there's going to be a lot of um, first week of ownership car crashes <laughs> at, at ten miles an hour because yeah. of the steering. Yeah, yeah. But like you know, you and me, we've driven everything. So like when there's some new weird shit to play with, like a novelty. Uh, yeah. uh, okay, I like this. My, my take. I drove the Cybertruck briefly, admittedly, but my take was that it's neither as fucking horrible or as fucking wonderful as everyone says. It's just a nice vehicle that is functionality as a pickup truck is hurt by its weird design. Uh, that was that's basically my conclusion, right? Everything else about it is in service of this design, and the design makes everything else about it worse. Yeah, you but, know, you know, it's but, like it's like my buddy. I'll leave his name out of it, <clears throat> but he got one, and he's like, "It's just so great." And I, I had my Rivian, and I'm like, "Well, oh, it's not a very good pickup truck." And he goes, well, "What do you mean?" And I was like, "Well, you know, if you have something in the back of a pickup truck and you hit the brakes, it goes against the back of the cab." I'm like, I took a water bottle and I threw it in the back of his cyber truck. I'm like, get it. And yeah. He's like, oh, I got to climb in. He, he's like 50 years old. He's like, yeah. Oh. And I'm like, you know, cyber truck, you can just reach over because, you know, they're both on air suspension. You could drop them both, but you still can't reach in. Yeah. So it, it's just that design is, I get it, you know, but it, it's not for me. And the one we drove, which belongs to Out of Spec Motoring, which is the same one, Motor yeah. Trend. Yeah, 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 yeah. They apparently are responsible for riding the press car. For yeah, everybody. yeah. They're the, Kyle's um, the press office. I mean, I, yeah, <laughs> for yeah, most yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I, I don't know about you, but I've never seen a car at any price point put together worse than this. Oh, uh, I, did, I I briefly drove it. I didn't. This I, well, thing I, I've was, seen I've seen Model Threes put together. This was heinous build uh, quality yeah, for the yeah. amount of money they're charging for this. Yeah, and the fact that they let that out the door. Yeah, looking like that for what you can see. Okay, what's lurking under there that you can't see? Well, yeah. holy shit. Sure. And, and, you know, and like Kyle, I was talking to him, uh, we had him on the, the Inevitable, and he was, he just posted about how he drove it up Angeles Crest, and like, yeah. he's like, it's just not, the software's not finished. He's like, sure. you know, just, it's like really not finished. It's like beta. And then um, our guy, Chris Walton, tested it, and he, he wouldn't follow anybody on Instagram, and he, you know, I was reading his test notes, came to the same conclusion as Kyle, and I'm like, okay, well, here's a guy who's been reviewing cars for 40 years, Kyle's 28 years old, and they came to the same conclusion, yeah. must be... It, it feels you know. extremely half-baked. And, you know, I I don't I hate to ever defend Tesla. They sort of said it was half-baked until 2025. They said that they're, the ones they build in 24 yeah. are for the early people, and regular production starts in Responsible 25. Responsible companies don't sell pre-production trash to people. <laughs> they just don't. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. Dude, I've, 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 I've begged OEMs to sell me pre-production press cars. Oh. Please sell me this. Oh. Please sell me the wheels off this. We're going to crush Please it. Please sell me the it. engine no, out and of they this. Cru- their I'm lawyers... going to put it in a 30-year-old car. I'll sign a waiver. Absolutely not. Their lawyers force them to crush it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're yeah. like, no, no, fucking send that, dude. I mean, I, mean crazy. I built an engine with AMG one time, and I built it alongside a certified AMG mechanic, and we're using smart tools, and the smart tools say that you've oh, torqued yeah. the bolt to 27 newton meters, right? Yeah. This thing was built fine. And they were going to put it in a press car, and then the legal team was like, no, you're not. <laughs> like, engine this was is fine. Lieberman engine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. But, but, but again, there, were, there, was, there was the same tools. I was, like, you know what I mean? Like, the tool does this. I was the one who put it there, mm-hmm. and it, it, all, it green light, green light, green light. And, like, you know. What happened to it? Did you get a coffee table oh, out of it Oh, you never heard this story? No, what happened oh, to the motor? the greatest. So, so, uh, so Ola Kalinius, who's now the CEO of Mercedes, by the time he was CEO of AMG. Yeah. Uh, and Tobias, who was head of engineering before he was CEO of AMG, they came to the Motor Trend offices to visit, and he was like, "Hey, we want to present the engine to Johnny." Mm-hmm. So, it's it's on it's like an engine on a show stand, you know, it's beautiful, it's on a stand, and I was like, "Oh, that's so cool," you know. And so we're gonna put it in the lobby. A couple days later, uh, George, rest in peace, our mailroom guy, was like, "Hey, man, you got a 700 pound package in the garage." <laughs> <laughs> And what had happened was Ola had said, hey, I want to present the engine. And it was in a crate somewhere in Germany. And so they were like, well, just give them the engine from the auto show, like the LA auto show engine, which is uh, in town. 
and they gave that to us. And then the engine I built showed up in a box. So oh, it went okay. First, it went to Isor, uh, like like Dave Coleman uh-huh. and, and uh, uh, Jason. Blanking out his last name, um, and they were going to Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh yeah. Thank you, and Dan, and they were going to try and put it in something, and then it turns out that like if you don't have like the gas cap, <laughs> yeah, that yeah. engine, it, it, it's so computerized. We, yeah. we didn't have the engine computer; we had all the hardware without the computer. Oh, so then I gave it to Jonathan Ward, uh-huh. and we were going to build something, and we 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 tried to get Tobias to. It was a fucking disaster. Don't even ask. <laughs> it, it didn't happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know Unusable. where it is now. Somewhere now, yeah. Someone's yeah. Paper, my engine. Somewhere. Someone's yeah. paperweight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Chris says uh, favorite whiskey bourbon for 120 bucks. It's a very specific price it point. Is, yeah. Uh 120. Okay. Um, uh, you can get some good bookers uh, for like 100 bucks. Uh-huh. Uh, there's oh God. What's it called? Little book. I think it's called Booker's Little or Little Book. Could you Google Little? I think it's Little Booker's Little Book or Jim Beam Little Book, that's about 120, 125, and that's that's a really cool um, uh, bourbon. 120. Uh, you know, well, there's pop- a whiskey company called Little Book. No, Little Book Whiskey. Uh, well, pop that up. Oh, here, Booker's Little Book, chapter one through seven. Yes, yeah, and chapter eight just came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. Uh, um, and I think it's like 120. I want to say. Okay. Um, that's that's banging, and um, probably get like ten year. It's a rye, but ten year whistle pig is probably like a hundred bucks a bottle, ninety nine bucks a bottle. The twenty seventeen chapter one little book is six hundred bucks. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So if you want to get a twenty twenty four now, do it and they, then save yes, it for yeah, four investment years. grade. Um, don't buy investment grade booze. To buy booze you want to drink. No, this is investment grade booze. <laughs> yeah, but what are we doing with it? We're I know, drinking our I know, investment I know. right now. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. yeah. Uh, JJ says when talking about the Cybertruck, you mentioned it not having enough brakes. I don't remember driving a car that gave me that feeling. Can you clarify what you meant? Yes, I can. The brakes stink. <laughs> it's a thousand fucking horsepower, and it's how how what is it, sixty eight hundred pounds. Yeah, and so some, somebody made a video saying it was, brakes. it was less than that, but, but we waited. It was like 68-something. Yeah, what, whatever it is, it ain't yeah. light, Yeah, and it doesn't have enough. I mean, you, you want to build something that's really heavy and has that much power, it should have commensurate braking performance. And in my opinion, granted, Kyle's truck that I drove had 10,000 miles on it. So I don't know what it's like to drive a brand-new one. But it didn't feel. But it's to an me, EV, so the brake should be fine. You know, in remember mo- most of the braking is yeah. going to be just lifting yeah. off the pedal and regening. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I we did a test recently. You know, we did like Cyber Beast versus Hummer uh, versus Rivian, and, and you know, we put the Cyber Beast in last place. And I'm, if I remember, I can look it up. But I remember, I think it was like yeah, it was like ten feet longer braking distances than the Rivian. The Rivian's been out for two years, and like you know, you always launch at the top of a segment. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you gotta you gotta do that. The, I don't recall. It's been it's been mm, a year and. Two years, probably. Maybe a year, whatever. We drove the Rivian like when it was brand new, yeah. before you bought yours. Yeah. And I did not. I do not recall thinking that the Rivian didn't have enough brakes. Oh, the brakes no, are I mean, awesome. We yeah. drove it in the canyons hard. Yeah. I, think the, we what I remember about the Rivian was this has no business handling. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. amazing. Yeah. That's M- what M- I remember. McLaren <laughs> suspension is really good on a truck. <laughs> yeah. It turns out. Yeah. 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 That yeah. was that was that was amazing. Yeah. yeah, I like yeah it. No, it has great brakes. Yeah. I'm excited yeah. for the R2 and the R3. R3X. I think, R3X. I think the R3X, R3X is going to be where X. it's at. Three motor yeah. R3X. Yeah. So Christian, uh, Christian's question we answered last show, or someone asked basically the same question: getaway car. We talked about it's that. It's not show. a Faraday <laughs> future because the car has to exist. Right. That's what I was, I was like. They, you can't get those. Still. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, I would, real quick, the getaway car, the the lucid sapphire. Yeah, that's <laughs> on probably a, on, a, on a full charge. Boy, <laughs> you'd have a hard time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we our answer was basically like super fast EV. Yeah, yeah. just it, be gone before anyone sees you, I, and no one can keep up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Dumhall, Dumhall Murphy. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I have a modified E30 as a fun weekend car, but it's constantly breaking because it's old. Should <laughs> I consider a, a Miata ND2 and sell the E30 so I can actually drive the car on weekends instead of spending them wrenching? I have another car as a daily. The best. Car is one you can drive. Sure, I love an E30, but like, 
if you're over wrenching on it, yeah. yeah, sell it and get something reliable. I'm also from the camp that E30s are a little overhyped, and you could get like a E36, and it would it'd be about as old but drive better. I mean, you know, different yeah. strokes for different folks. Yeah. But like, if your problem is that your car is unreliable and you want to be driving it, yeah, get a fucking yeah. reliable. I wonder car. If, if the N or the whatever the yeah the NB I guess it's called is is the one. I, I like the, the good. Th- I like the third gen Miata. I know they're funny the looking NC? and all that. Yeah, the NC was just such a fun car to drive. Like, and it had the most power of all the Miatas. I was just I talking know. to uh, uh, Rio, who came up with us with NSX. He said his new track car is, in the movie, you get an NC, and then you get a Ford 2.5 liter out of like a rental car for 200 oh, bucks, and that's what they drop. like a Fusion. It, yeah, Fusion. It bolts right in. And no It's got way. more torque, but they blow up after one season. He's like, so then you get another one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bucks nice. a season. That's cheap. Yeah. yeah, I raced I raced an NC for two years, and uh, an NC catches a bad rap. It's a it nice does. car. Right. The ND, I think, is better, but the NC was nice. <sighs> I think I think an ND2 is a great replacement for an E30 because it's a small, fun car with a good- Oh, you said ND, sorry. ND. Yeah. Good revy engine. You'll get a ton of enjoyment out of it, and it'll work all the time. Yeah, I just uh, the ND two. That's the one they just came out with, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, I haven't driven that yet. The ND three is the new one. Oh, the, the ND two is when they so, three. I'm so out of these codes. The ND two okay. had the one point eight liter, like the revised engine yeah. with a lot okay. more horsepower. The yeah. first ND was a little weak. The, the ND two is good. I like the ND. It goes well. Mm-hmm. It's just it did that weird thing where it's using the the soft rear ass to like steer. True. And, and I did not. I, like I just that. thought that was weird. And I hear they've corrected that. Yeah. I like the club uh, more. Jason was that. impressed with the ND three. He just drove Kevin. in the rear. No, oh, Camisa. Camisa. Yeah, 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 he had this one up at uh, I, when I saw him at Ionic Five N. Okay, he had driven. He had driven with the press car down there. It was this like baby shit brown. It was fucking wild. I'd never seen him like a Miata in that color before. Yeah, I'd love to get yeah, it for a week. I, I, it's hard. Yeah, Miatas are all great. I just, I, I, everyone, no one ever talks about the C, and I'm always like, that's just such a wonderful driving experience. Cs are good. The happy face sucks. But, you know, I'm pro C. Yeah. Uh, last three, and then we're going to wrap it up. Uh, Adam says, I want to get out of a 911 to get a four-door car, and I'm Panamera's too ugly for him. Okay. Thinking Ghibli versus Mercedes E550 versus Jaguar XF versus Julia. I have <sighs> only driven, well, I haven't driven these in a while. I've never driven a Ghibli. I, oh, really? I, mean, I don't know. I think they're quite unattractive. Ghiblis are... Like what a you know, Ferrari engine plus a great chassis. Like Ghiblis are great. Now, you know, uh, do you like looking at like buttons out of Jeeps on your steering wheel? Because that's what they are, <laughs> literally. But I don't know. It doesn't bother me that much. Uh, e Class V8. So E Class V8 would be an AMG. No, 550, e not AMG, oh. not a 63. Uh, yeah, hey, that's I'm, a nice car. Those are great cars. That's a really nice car. Uh, Jag XF. Like yeah, they almost got there. Didn't quite get there. If you get the F, they're pretty good. Julia Quadra f- 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 Maggio Folio, um, that's the best of the bunch by far. It's also smaller. No, it's a, I guess the E class. Um, uh, yeah, you know, don't get a non Quadro. I had one for three years. It's just a boring car when it's not. You know, it's exciting for the first month, and then you're like, yeah, it looks nice, but yeah, it's then looking. it's just a car. Then it's a car with a bad backup camera. And, and <laughs> I would go E Class, man. Those have we we drove a yeah. bunch of those back in the day. They yeah. have great seats. The V 8s a great sounding engine. They're nice inside. They yeah. look sharp and tough. I, and I would just classic. say if, if if performance, like he's getting out of a nine eleven, so like the closest in terms of performance by far would be the Julia Quadrifoglio. True. By far, and then um, and the, the Ghibli like handles and drives and sounds great. Yeah, does everything else real bad, but it, 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 how about this? How about Audi S seven? Uh, yeah, Audi S seven four liter great. twin turbo, F- great car, not bad. No, great. I might I might throw Audi S seven in there. Or also, Audi S- RS five. I oh, might three. throw out the Lexus GSF. If you can find them, do they exist? They do exist. They're car. not easy to find. You got to go and nationwide. All orange. <laughs> <laughs> the press car we had was gray. I remember. Yeah, Dark we did gray. have a gray. If you can find a GSF, that's that's the <sighs> money. The sad thing about the GSF was, remember, the original plan was to put the V10 in it, yeah. and they, they <laughs> cowered it out. Yeah. The V8's like, it's okay. Yeah. But, yeah. No, Maybe some journalist built a V10 somewhere and <laughs> sitting around. You yeah, that'd that be in. good. I mean, a BMW, you know, five. 50 from not the last gen of the gen before is pretty good. Last gen blue. Yeah. 
Um, but you can also, you know, with those money, you can get to like a little bit older M5s. I don't know. Uh, Noah says, my grandfather recently passed away, found his original receipt for a 55 Studebaker <laughs> Commander Coupe. Nice. I'm trying to track down the car he bought new. I have a serial number and an engine number, but the car predates VINs. Tips for tracking down an old car. There's got to be a fucking sure. Studebaker registry. Yeah, exactly. You, yeah. Somewhere. Can you it's, just Google Studebaker registry? Th- there's that, but also, like, f- 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 whoever... Forget about the registry. Find the president of the Studebaker Club. Yeah, and yeah. Give him your grandfather's name. Yeah. And he'll be like, oh, yeah, you know, James in, in Maine has that <laughs> yeah, car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we used to smoke Cubans together. Yeah. yeah, yeah. People that are into, like, these kind of old cars are really bizarre. And uh, So here's a bunch of different, if you go to StudebakerDriversClub.com, Jesus. here's a, a bunch of different Studebaker registries. Look, uh, it's got the contact name and their email. Email all those and guys. And all these emails are at yahoo.com, so there's nothing wrong with that. And by the way, they're all sitting around waiting for your email. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> these oh, dudes wow. are fucking ready. Yeah. Each of these links goes to a like Word doc a with a list of car. every oh, yeah. car they've entered. Oh, based, are these that. VINs? Like, this is the old That's VIN? serial numbers. Those are serial numbers. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. So this guy's car might be in this list it somewhere. Is, it, yeah. I would start with that. <laughs> Studebakerdriversclub.com. And then, yeah, the local club president. And, and also, also to... g- Google the serial number. You'd be amazed at the what you know if you get into mm-hmm. like the old Google archives and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's amazing what's online. Is this uh, the last one on the list, Zach, or can we finish on a on a? a, a... Uh, there are more. Okay, let's keep going. We're gonna finish on a really good one. Hang on, let's see. Keep going. Oh, <laughs> I like David's question. It's not serious, but it is very funny. We can do it real quick. What is it? <laughs> yeah, uh, Dave, we don't have to answer. With Dodge canning the Challenger and Chevy killing off the Camaro, what is there left for new military recruits who dream of making a terrible life choice to the tune of 36% APR for 108 months? I actually have an answer to this. Yeah. It's called the Jixer. Let me introduce yeah. <laughs> you to the Suzuki GSXR 1000 wow. motorcycle. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, I mean, Wranglers will always be there, right? Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> um, okay, wait, keep uh, keep going, keep going. Okay, to, oh, this, here's a good one. I like Philip Lafranca's uh, question. Did any of you struggle with imposter syndrome or something similar when you got into journalism and digital media? If so, how did you overcome it? <laughs> You're asking it? the two wrong guys. <laughs> yeah, right. I have what I think is a good idea for a podcast, but I have a hard time figuring out why anybody would ever care what I have to say. See, Matt and I had Jewish mothers, and so Jewish mothers... <laughs> They they said, you're the smartest, most best looking, most wonderful person on earth from the minute you're born till you went to college. Yeah, <laughs> dot, 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 if only you'd lose a few pounds. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, no, on, but honestly, my imposter syndrome, it, it, it. It didn't kick on till later in my career, and, and it would come up in funny places. Like, like when I did Pike's Peak, um, I remember they did a thing at, at Portia, Colorado Springs, and they had like... David Donahue and you know it was Randy Post and and Zwart and all these dude, everyone who's racing Porsches on stage and me and they're intro- and I'm like please don't give me any questions like I I should be in the audience and they're like no yeah. but you, you you've been driving I was it. there for this by the way yeah, 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 you were. Yeah, yeah, and Johnny yeah <laughs> right, what did I say I mean something like that right I mean it was, it was yeah so that like like situations like that but like no early in my career like absolutely not I I was convinced I knew more than everybody. Um, that that, that same. fades with time. Yeah, same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think I got I think I got less less confident as we. I mean, look, which I was is the way to go. I was a cocky motherfucker. You were a cocky motherfucker. Sure, sure. <laughs> had right? to stand out right? from the crowd. <laughs> well, right. You got it. You had to do it. it you know, and uh, but I remember like. Not that it was easy to do or anything, but I remember like being in a in a group and we we're talking. About, I'd just driven like a God, like a E thirty six M three. And the transmission was super rubbery. I was just shocked by like I'm like oh like uh, uh, and I'm like yeah I think it's kind of a bad transmission. And everyone's like you're saying something bad about a BMW? Are you what? You can't say anything bad about a BMW. I'm like well no, but I had a rubbery trans. No, and it was like oh my god, there's there is this crazy groupthink. Yeah, you know and. Um, I think now, sadly, that's boiled over into, like, hot takes where everybody's got to be like, nope, Aston Martins are ugly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, Yeah. Uh, I feel like as, you know, I didn't work for another outlet for quite a long time. We right. were always just sort of making our own thing. So there was never a sense of, like, 
we don't belong here. It was like, well, we just made this. Right. Like, it's not like someone someone hired you and said, you're an expert, come here. Yeah. But, like, we were just doing, we were just making it. So, like, fucking stop me, you know? You, yeah, <laughs> like, no, well, no. Whatever. I mean, that, look, when I was at Jalabnik, we definitely had that. It's yeah. like, you know, how are you going to stop? And the other thing was, at, I don't know if you got any of this, but at Jalopnik, like, people did want to stop us. Yeah. The old guard was like, these fucking bloggers, yeah. you know, like, don't invite them on press trips. Yeah. It was a real thing. For ours, it was internet commenters. Like, I think <laughs> that was the check and balance of, you know, people were, there are assholes, but then there's genuine criticism or questions, like, where they want clarification about, you know, like, well, what about this? Or how come you said this about that thing? And then I think the the muscle that you worked a lot, when because you, you responded to all the comments for a long time when you respond to the good ones was building a muscle of here's why I thought the way I thought, mm. here's why I said what I said. And then you learn to back up your assessment or, or explain how you felt about a car. Uh huh. Yeah, I, mean, I also, you, I also, you can just yeah. tell you're thinking about something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Huh? No, uh, yeah. You, you're, I mean, that's, I didn't realize I was doing that, but okay. I'll take that compliment. Thank you. Well, but you like, are very good at saying, this is why I feel the way I feel. You're, I, I see you stop and use that. I never say that. I just say, oh, sure. Uh, I also had my <laughs> self-esteem, like, destroyed by internet. That was a bad oh, part. Oh, really? Bad oh, side. yeah. I mean, I already thought I was fat, so, and here I was allowing myself oh. to be told I was fat a thousand times oh, I used a to get day. called fat a million times a minute. I, I was just like, you know, Well, that doesn't bother some people, it but it bothered me. me. Oh. Yeah, that bothered me. Oh. It didn't always. It does, there's other people okay. that are like. That no, does, we, we, we've had a few, and usually it was, it was women, but we'd have a few, like, just female editors that oh, would make dude. a video. And I mean. It, like one of them, I still remember. She just was like, "I'll never do a video again." Yeah, yeah. And you know, she was just a normal-looking person. Yeah. And they were brutal. No, I I can't yeah. imagine what it's like to be a woman on the internet. Well, did you it see just... the the clip six months ago? The woman was at like Barrett Jackson. She's the commentator, and she explained the flaming chicken thing on a Firebird. And the comments on that post on Instagram were so aggressive. Of like, this stupid chick. What's she talking about? That's not what it is. Even when. Other experts that are in this job were coming in saying, yeah. that is what it's called. Yeah. Here it is in the manual. Here right. it is in right. the right. option book from Pontiac. Yeah. But these people were just like, fuck this bitch. It was yeah. so stupid. No, Look, be, that's, uh, being a woman on the internet is a whole other yeah. level I, I, of fucking. Yeah, I mean, I would get called, well, you know, stupid, fat. Can't. That was the one on me. They always said, I can't drive. And I never knew where that came from because, like. Why can't I drive? Like I, I there's countless hours of videos of me driving really well, you know. And like, it, but it, it, I can't drive, and I was, I was just always curious about that one. It's like, where's that coming from? Uh, fact, a, a lot of anti-Semitic stuff. Like yeah. that was always like, why would Mercedes let a Jew drive their car? <laughs> you know, like, yikes. <laughs> oh, you never, you never got that. Because they, no, they really, I don't come off they, that Jewish. Oh, Farah is a Yeah, Farah is well, not. people don't know. Lieberman is. Yes, yes. Yeah, Jewish There's Jewish no Jewish question yeah, here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jewish no. Jewish no. Uh, yeah, yeah. You got to go one layer down to get to Jew for me. Okay. But yeah, I, yeah, I, I, got, I, I mean, it was. <laughs> it was. The, I mean, I remember. Like, a lot of the commenters know now, by the way. We, oh, we, we yeah, still now they know. But, yeah. but in the beginning, no. But like. Was, I was a Habibi for a minute. Right. But I would get. The anti Semitism was wild. And this was like. Year, this is like 2011. Yeah, uh, people were crazy shit. You know, so I just was like, you know, it's just the internet's a sewer and people are horrible. And I don't know, I just never let it. Yeah, well, I mean, I think for me it was like there was uh, there was a lot of like, what the fuck? Is this? this guy's nuts. Like, what is that? What is that on? But if if you know if someone says something to you that you already think about yourself, uh -huh. and then it's like, well, I'm I'm not. This isn't an irrational thought I'm having about myself because this other person has noticed it and pointed it out. I, I, That's where I, you end I, up yeah. in a fucking see because no one ever thought to spiral. say like this guy buys a lot of books but doesn't read them all. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you get to me. <laughs> <laughs> they never thought to say that, you know. Yeah, right. um, no, yeah. but like, but but I remember like <laughs> as I went along funny. because because I started. This guy has <laughs> ten thousand unread books. Yeah. So, <laughs> enough, Matt. <laughs> I feel bad. Um, but like as I went along because I started with like 
the most confidence possible. But I would say, every, I remember this one time, and it still pops in my, up in my head and haunts me. We were, it was like my first time, uh, first year at Motor Train, car of the year. We had Jim Hall. So Jim, you know Jim Hall? Yeah. He's an analyst for General Motors. His brother was Bob Hall, the guy who created the Miata, convinced Mazda they had to do the Miata. Like, this guy knows more about cars than- a, a racing any. school also? No, different different Jim Hall. This, oh, this guy, a, he's just an, he's like a, he's a, he's a human computer who knows Every he, he he just knows like every engine code of every car ever made like okay. like beyond a, a savant when it comes to cars, and I don't remember the car we're arguing about, but I was saying something about like how we should reward this car because the engine's so great and like that's where the real money is in car development. And he just stopped. He just started laughing at me. He's like, "What? Why the fuck is this guy even here? <laughs> engines." Engines? Engines are five percent. Like what? He's like firewall. He's like axle to firewall. Sixty percent of the cost. Of it. What the fuck are you talking about? And I was just like, I was such a beaten puppy after that. I like, I didn't say anything for like two years at Car of the Year. You know, like I was like, oh god, oh that's rough. Yeah, yeah it was brutal. like, but it was a guy who's like, you know, he was, he was like had left Ford and was didn't have a job for me. Yeah, left us and went to like you know GM and was oh, you know wow. it was like a. I've never had someone in the industry beat the shit out of me. I've had this, randoms, this, but I've never had either like an engineer or a PR person or another journalist straight beat the shit out of me before. I, I've had a colleague leave his name out of it, but like we got in a fight on the phone and he started texting shit at me like, you fucking blogger. Like, wh who do you think you are? You're just a fucking blogger. And, uh, Screenshot? Well, no, it was I, I, I just <laughs> forgot about it and I yeah. got to work and Ed's like, come here. He's like... So, so and so. He's like those texts I sent you. Well, no, no, no. no. <laughs> I was yeah. drunk. Bro. No, no, no. To make it up to you, we're gonna have an EV podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like, he's like, so and so called and said they may have sent you some things, <laughs> and they want to buy you a bottle of whiskey. Are you cool? And I'm like, you know what? I, honestly, I'd forgotten about it. That's fine. Yeah. I had that. I had a PR guy one time who was like, "Who the fuck are you?" He's like. You're nobody. Now you're everywhere. Johnny this, Johnny that. Like, who the fuck are you? And I was like, all right, calm down, bro. Wow. Yeah, that was yeah. that was a little. It was in front of a lot of other journalists, and that was a yeah, little. Cool. And that was like, I'd been at Motor Trend for like five years at that point, and it, you know, uh, so whatever. I was nobody then. I'm 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 somebody now, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> nobody plus fourteen years of yeah. Motor Trend. Like, yeah, yeah. But you know. <sighs> Do your podcast, kid. <laughs> yeah, you should. Yeah, no, that, well, yeah, that, I mean, that's, to go back to what Philip said. Yeah. Who, do it, don't do it because you think there's an audience for it. Do it because you want to create something. And the first step to doing a thing is doing the thing. Yeah. Yes. I, I just felt like I had something to say. It was like I was driving a lot of cars. I had a lot of opinions about cars. I was kind of... You remember the industry was a lot different when we started. I mean, it really was like you had to like polish Shelby's knob once every five articles, right? You know what I mean? Like you had to write about how Steve McQueen was so wonderful, and it was just a different industry. Yeah. It really was, and I just felt like I had something to contribute, and and uh, I think I did. I don't know, you know, like yeah, no. I, in the beginning, I just thought it was fun. I was like the idea of I was working at a car wash. Yeah, I was washing cars in winter in New York. <laughs> oh, that sucks. And then I was like, wait, I could, I could make a video of driving a car, and that makes money. I'm fucking out, bro. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. How about I never heard like your origin story. What was? Uh, I was living in Colorado, snowboarding and oh, waiting tables, gosh. trying to figure out what to do. This was like 2006, seven. Eight. So same, same era, yeah. Same, yeah, same yeah. era. I mean, we're we're all basically the same age. But yeah. I moved here within months before or after he did and literally my only idea was like i want to work in tv video with cars like i don't mm. know what but i watched top gear that it was the same thing that looks fun i like cars i was a valet for a long time like i have opinions about cars you know and that just seems like a good time so just but did you did you have out. like a fear of like oh i shouldn't be saying what i'm saying or i shouldn't be here yeah for oh, you a did. long time well, and, he, oh, sure. and he wasn't on camera no. for a minute that's true he was behind the camera for a while so you didn't you while you wrote things for people for other people you didn't have to literally recite them to the camera as yourself Correct. for a while but, i had but were uh, you writing stories 
Well, like I was the automotive consultant for the car show, like the only yeah. one in the house for that. And so, and oh, so I right. that was rough. <laughs> I almost was. <laughs> that was tough. Um, they didn't. They had consultants. Mm. They listened to none of them. Oh, uh, I mean, they that... had the best consultants. They hired all the smartest people, and then didn't listen to any of them, myself I mean, included. <laughs> I, real quick, uh, I, I'll never forget. I went to. Uh, I won't even mention it, but the short one's office, mm. and I was like, "No," and he's like, "What?" And I'm like. I don't want to be involved with this. And he's just like, you're turning down TV? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, you'll never work in this town again. But <laughs> he usually we're paying said that to like, money. He would yes. usually say the same thing to 19-year-old girls, basically. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, go, go. yeah, yeah. But, but, but I, had, I had the imposter fear because I was like in charge of all the fact-checking before the pieces went up on TV, and which was fine. It just meant like a lot of research and checking stuff. But that was like, oh, fuck, there's a lot of pressure. Am I the person to do this? You know? okay. And then as I moved into like – you know, uh, producing drive and other things. It was always like, am I the person that should be used to refer to these things? And then should I be on the podcast and talk about these things? And because I was a few years behind you in terms of in front of camera, it was like, well, are my opinions actually real and valid? Oh. I mean, they're similar to other people's, but- But you were a Jewish mother. I did, but <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't believe anything she says. Yeah, I'm very skeptical of the press. All right, The yeah. audience didn't give Zach the credit he deserved for a while. Okay. I, I did. Yeah. Our peer group did. Yeah. Of but course. the audience was like, didn't it took it takes a while to which is true of any channel that up. Yeah, I mean it's also fun because you started on video. I didn't get yeah, to yeah, video yeah. until I was five years in, and I got to Motor Trend, and they're like, Here, go on camera. I never thought about doing. Yeah. I just wanted to write, and then it turned out they put a camera on me, and I wouldn't freeze up for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, That's the biggest hurdle. Yeah, yeah. If you can, if they if they can put a camera on you and you're the same person, yeah, you're fucking Hollywood ready. Yeah, no, it's, it's a weird. crazy hurdle to to cover, and it's totally unpredictable who that who will clear it and who will not. I mean, to, and to Motor Trend's credit, and they still do it this way too. Is is like they just put everyone on video, try it once, see if mm. it works. Mm. Um, and just for whatever reason at that time period, it was like me and actually they didn't even think to put Carlos on. I was like, we should put Carlos in a video. Like he's, you know, he's good. Yeah. Turns out. Yeah. Turns he's out good. he's good. Pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I think a quick note for this also yeah. for Philip is we've, we've heard, I mean, on podcasts and stuff, but like famous comedians, a lot of them will say that they still feel imposter syndrome, even though they could have sure. 30 years in the, in the career, all the celebrity, all the money, et cetera. <clears throat> they still feel like, oh, when are they going to pull? The rug out from under me, or they're gonna be like, actually, you're not that good at this. So I don't think it it may not ever go away for Philip or people like us, but you just you just keep going. Yeah, and I would also say like like you don't how to put this like you know if you want to uh, talk about cars, you're just talking about cars. Like yeah. it's not you know there's a lot of people that are like I gotta become like the like the, the very fastest driver and I gotta have like the most 100. percent It's an opinion. You're, you're doing it. You're doing opinion. And, that, and by the way. We can test cars. We know how fast they go. You take a pro driver, you do a lap of a track, you know how fast a car is on track. What's it feel like? What's it like? How, what did you think about it? And that's, mm -hmm. you can't fail. It's your opinion, yeah. you know? Yeah. So. That's a good place to end. All right. Thank you for bringing this uh, this right? bender, bender stash. This is fucking nice. Yeah. No, I mean, they. they about that. 100%. I mean, yeah. I used to, yeah. <laughs> Bill and, and Drew have been good friends of mine for a long time and, like, you know, before they started the label, we would just sit at Drew's house and get hammered. Bill was the one with the JTS <laughs> Call Brown. it research. Oh, really? It was just, That's so, a secret. So Stoddard, you know, the owner, would have like thousands upon thousands of dollars. A lot of bottles that cost thousands of dollars each. And Bill showed up with this one bottle. And we're like, oh, what's that? And we drink it. We're like, whoa, how much is that? And he's like, 14. We're like, 1,400? That's not bad. He's like, no, 14. <laughs> 14, <laughs> $14. Dollars. Yeah. $14. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so thanks cool. for coming in. Yeah, Thanks man. for bringing it. Super Great cool. radio. Always good to see you. Always up good. On, and we saw you this morning up on the mountain, too. That was fun, too. <laughs> we got there at like 930. Like, we need to go soon. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. we do. <laughs> that was, I, yeah, I was like, I was like, should I even bother going today? I'm like, yeah, I got to yeah, drive this Dude, the traffic this morning was so fun. Oh, so bad getting um, up there. Yeah, I know. It it's terrible. It, traffic patterns last month or so have been 
brutal. The the traffic is the last month has been worse than I've ever seen it. Now. Yeah, I don't know what's happening. I like when people try and rub it in my face. People are leaving LA like fucking good. Wait, wait, please Get take the a, fuck yeah, out, dude. Yeah, I, I, take I, your car. I with know. You. I know all, the, all these like guys in Texas. I'm like, oh, boy, they're moving to Texas. I'm like, have them. Good. <laughs> Enjoy yeah. LA traffic in Austin, bro. Have yeah. Fuck with that. I know. It's so uh, weird. Spikes Car Radio, of course, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. every week, and you know, blah blah blah. Yeah, Motor go to Motor Trend. Trend. I'm Yada, a bunch of stuff. And... You, do you know where to find this guy? Yeah. He ain't some fucking Instagram. new character here. That's right. That's Old, right. I think you're probably our most frequent uh, guest at this point. I right? think so. Yeah, I think I you got so. the, I think I, you got the top. I mean, top I, I remember, oh, Jesus, when was that first one? was at your house oh, yeah. in Playa. Yeah, yeah. City. You were definitely I, first season. And that was, remember you would have like 12 people on at the time, and it was just like, blah, 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 blah. Those were pandemonium. <laughs> While smoking those. pot constantly. This is like, <laughs> hey, this is like, this is the like. The bong when, had its own microphone. Dude, when people, <laughs> it did at one point. When We put a lav on the bong at one point. Yeah, when did. people are like, I don't know if I'll be good at this. It's like, dude, go look at our early shit. Like, oh. we weren't good at this. I mean, I would I, we're still not good at it. I, I, I still go back that video of the, the Audi R8 we did 100 years oh, ago. Oh, yeah. Like, 2009, baby. It's so bad, but it's so funny. Like, yeah. <laughs> I remember you I spelled you your name wrong doing. for that video, and you told me very directly, like, you spelled my name wrong, and I was like, oh, no, yeah. and it, like, ate my heart. <laughs> yeah. You, 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 do, you learn by doing. Yeah. Learn by doing. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. and most of what you're going to make in the beginning is total garbage. Oh. Oh, oh I've, I've gone back and read. I mean, look, I'll even go further. I found, when I was cleaning up my mom's house, I found, like, my high school diary. Mm. I mean... That, if somebody, if a commenter <laughs> would find my high school diary and print the horse shit I was yeah. writing when I was 15 about the world. I bet the opinions are amazing. Yeah. I, it was, I was, I was shocked. It, it was just like, you ever like go back, like, man, I loved this when I was a kid. And you watch it, you're like, oh, what the fuck yeah. was yeah. wrong with me? Well, this was. 50 times worse than that feeling. It was like, I was a fucking turd. <laughs> dude, the only, it's like Andy Dufresne, dude. The only way to, to, to liberation is through 100, 100 yards of <laughs> shit. Well said. Yeah, yeah. Well said. That's our show. Uh, we're back uh, next week. We got Jay Ryan in studio on Monday talking about the future of Newcomb's Ranch, nice. which will be uh, interesting. We saw the future. We did. It smells it's, bad. Uh, it smells like <laughs> Four-year-old spices. <laughs> it smells like a lot of expired spices. <laughs> Botulism is what it smells like. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you to our patrons, and uh, we'll see you all later. Bye.